and welcome to another episode of the Jumping the Rail podcast. This is Mark Rebin coming to you from the Noodles position in Champaign, Illinois. Joined as always by my buddy Menders. And uh, Menders, we got quite a bit to talk about today. <laughs> can, can, we, can we get a week where not a whole lot happens? <laughs> <laughs> you, just want, you just want shorter shows. I know, how, I know what you're saying. <laughs> oh, look, Dwayne's already in the chat. First yep. one in today. Hello, Dwayne. <laughs> oh, my goodness. <laughs> So, sorry. <laughs> we got all kind. We got all kinds of things. We got out, ousted presidents in pro wrestling. We got we got top ten Tuesday back on this week. We got a lot to talk about with WrestleMania Elimination Chamber match. Uh, uh, why don't we start off though? Tony Khan had a big announcement on Wednesday. <laughs> you call it a big announcement? No, he called it a big announcement. I'm just quoting the guy. <laughs> so. I have to chuckle at the fact that all of us in the group had called it, but it's <laughs> whatever the case may be, especially AJ. AJ's been on it mm-hmm. for a while now, but it's such a big announcement. Yeah, for those that missed it, uh, I forget the date, but they're running a show in Boston called Big Business, finger quotes. Big Business. And anybody with half a brain knows that one Mercedes Monet is a Bostonian. Yes. So that is the general opinion is she's going to be making her debut there that on that particular episode now if it's me i double it down i have okada debut on the same show make it make it bigger because from the sounds like it okada signing with AEW. is he going to AEW? Okay. that's that's what i'm hearing well then who's going sure. to wwe what do you mean the vignette with the three oh, faces the three faces i still think it's tamatanga you think it's tamatanga I, that's my guess because he's made his whole career in Japan. Okay. So that, so that could make sense. I, I'm okay with that. I'm just, that was just who I assumed it I mean, was going to be. Okada would since... be the bigger get, but from the sounds of it, he it sounds like he's wanting to sign with AEW, just from what I've read today. Oh, good Lord, put that up by AJ. <laughs> oh, that's Dwayne. You think Dwayne. John Cena's going to show up at an AEW show? Okay. That, that ain't happening. That ain't happening. March, March 13th. Okay. So two days before the Ides of March. And if you look at the graphics, it says Boston with dollar signs. So yeah, it's just do the math. It, it's it's be... too obvious. That's that's how Tony rolls. I know it is, but come on, dude. Give us a book. Let us book for once. I'd love to book. Wouldn't it? Just I for one too. day. Just give me a book for a week. <sighs> I'd be as happy as this guy. <laughs> We want to play with our action figures. Oh, Dwayne was joking. Okay. Thank Dwayne, goodness. sometimes we can't tell with you. It's, We're uh, not sure all the time. You have a good com- comedic deadpan, as they say in the business. Good poker face. Yes. All right. So, oh, another thing we just found out today, Menders. I, th- I think it's the main event tomorrow night on Dynamite. Tony is bringing back the Texas death match. On television this time, not on pay-per-view. For what? To to further the storyline with Pockets and the Undisputed Kingdom, of course. Oh, what? What? <laughs> I can't believe I got that out with a straight face. I know. Yeah, it's ridiculous. <laughs> Why? <sighs> well, number one, you know my opinion. It, he doesn't book Texas death matches. He books no. street, no-holds-barred matches with funny names. booking. Dory Funk Sr. would slap the piss out of Tony Khan for running a Texas death match the way he does. Yes. Oh, Menders, uh, by the way, I am a man of my word. Oh. Holy I said Jesus. last week. <laughs> yeah, look at the size of this damn thing. That's huge. You're like, got show marks. <laughs> <laughs> so we are going to see if a savage-sized Slim Jim will make it through the entire show. What flavor is this? I'm going to laugh if it's Origi- spicy. This, it's original. It's not the spicy. Oh, okay. I, I, I tried the spicy, like though. Jalapeno or something. <laughs> well, I had to have the wife pick it up today because I didn't have a chance to get it yesterday. So while she was out, while I was at work, I was asking, will you swing I get one of these? And <laughs> She, I guess, I think they thought she was nuts because she got this and a muffin at the same time. But. Uh, All right. Well, let's start. Is, I want to start. We need to start somewhere else because I want to save all the AEW talk for when That's our guest is on. 
Good. Okay. I'm gonna, I'm gonna we need to save the AEW talk for for when I, I want it when oh, Zach's oh, oh, yeah. here. <laughs> okay. Well, Mindy, why don't you say who the up. guest is this week? Zach Ruber is the guest this week, the videographer for Zero One um, USA. And we're so excited. We've had him on the podcast, and he kind of teased that he has a story where Tony Khan is after on, him for some reason. So he was on the Zero One podcast, not the not the JTR podcast. Did I say JTR? He just said he was on the podcast. Oh yeah, he was on the Zero and Shootout podcast. So yes, every Wednesday and on YouTube. You're so much better at promoting than I am. I've had practice. Plus, I listen to a lot more <laughs> podcasts than you do. It's true. Speaking of, <laughs> I'm halfway through the drive-through, so it's pretty exciting. Oh yeah, I'm about. I got through most of it. It's uh, corny. It's is pretty lively on this one. <laughs> yes. <laughs> the best uniform you can put on is a smile. As yeah. The great last said. <laughs> I was so taken aback by that. I was like, wait, what? <laughs> <laughs> okay, Dwayne says, what was the deal with bringing back The Rock if we're not getting him versus Roman at Mania? I think this is just a slow burn. Uh, there's all kinds of theories about what's going to happen. First, should we talk about the press event for Let's Thursday? Let's go ahead and Mindy's? talk about the press conference. Did you watch the whole thing? I did not, but I've seen bits and pieces. Okay. I did. Overall, I love the fact it was only about an hour long. Okay. <laughs> But had, wait, I didn't see it, but I heard Corny talk about it, and then I saw the bits and pieces on YouTube. <laughs> well, the Triple H opened it with a very bombastic mm -hmm. kind of, I think Corny called it a rah-rah speech. It was just kind of building up the show and everything. Right. He talked a lot about the main event of WrestleMania 1, which was the tag match. Okay. Which kind of, kind of got my head spinning a little bit, got me thinking. They had Bianca came out. I think she was plugging her TV show with with Tez, the the Hulu show. Then they had a nice little interaction with who with, with Hulu with Becky and Rhea. Okay. Don't don't ask me. And uh, <laughs> I don't, know you know, I don't think this is gonna make it the whole show. <laughs> and then. Uh... Hey, we got Scott in here too. <laughs> Holy cow, Scott's back. That's one of our zero yeah, one Scott, shootout guys. Scott says they also got pivoted because of the fan. That's my friend. That's not a pivot. That is a work. Yeah, they that's work, a work. Everybody. It's I don't a care work. what bully. I don't care what bully Ray or Cornette says. That was a that was a work. Sir, my name is Gary Vaselli. Or uh, sir, my name is is Mark Redman. <laughs> oh, uh, hey, Gary had a theory. By the way, uh, he gave me his blessing to to share it. Okay. So. It's about what they do with the Rock with Ro uh, yeah, with Rock Roman Cody okay. at WrestleMania going forward. Okay. Okay. So he thinks. Let me get it because it's kind of wordy. <laughs> so you got to pull it up so you can read it directly from yes. what he said. <laughs> so first off, he says he wants to he wants Rock to wrestle someone of Hunter's choosing. When in control of WWE from Triple H on night one, and I'm reading this from his message that he sent me. Then he is actually head of the table, screw Cody night two, make Cody's life just a living hell for a year like never seen before. Then Cody wins the next Rumble, setting a record, which is the three in a row, starting at slot number one, which was also what I was thinking. Uh, Triple H regains power by going to the board, being better at politics, being the cerebral assassin, etc. Roman and Cody in Hell in a Cell, or even better, a Dusty Rhodes bull rope match, bloodline ban. Cody wins a bloody brawl. I don't think we're going to get bloody because, you know, nope. WWE. because at this point, why not? And then he added an addendum on the next message. He said, I think The Rock needs to take the belt from Reigns in the near future to assert dominance. Cody does all the same stuff he just mentioned. And then Cody beats The Rock. Well, actually, he says Reigns and the rest of the bloodline turn their back on the Rocket Mania next year. Cody beats the bigger star and biggest heel, whichever one that is. And then Rock can retreat away until needed again. I, you really think they're going to go another year with this? <laughs> I won't, I don't know if they'll go all the way to Mania, but I I can see them. I don't think they'll go all they the way break, to Mania. They got to beat Hogan's record. Right, I know that. So that's at least a SummerSlam. 
Well, if this if this is AJ's idea, we all know it's going to be another eight years down the road. But well, <laughs> yeah, like, that's, that's we're a, down to what four years now, maybe uh, but, four um, more years, I think. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So. AJ, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yep, we know how you roll. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, Dwayne but with us. You gotta be it's curious where they're gonna go with it for another year. Is it gonna be rocket? Why am I waving this thing like I'm patting? You know, I don't know, but it's cracking me up, and your wife makes me laugh a lot. <laughs> oh, she thinks she's funny. Well, she is funny. She's a hoot. she is funny. What are you talking yes. about? <laughs> but yeah, I I don't want it to go another year. I I would be okay with it. I'm still with you. I'm kind of with you still on this December 26th thing. I'm I'm really liking that idea. If they run Mania at the Garden next year, then I'm okay with it. Otherwise, yeah, December. Correct. Yeah, if not December. <laughs> Stacy, this is a family show. <laughs> and I'm still waiting for my Jey Uso, Ole Anderson heel turn. Yeah, we still need that too. <sighs> I, You know what, though? It's kind of nice that we don't know exactly where it's going i love the fact Although, that we're guessing i know i do too and that we're not well i mean we're guessing to an extent with elimination mm-hmm. chamber is there really anything that we're not guessing at or that we are guessing at i mean it's pretty much i'm i'm pretty dead set drew wins the men's match becky wins the ladies match yeah they that's get kind of my shots. thought too the only other it, thing that it could could happen. Mm-hmm. Bianca could win and go after Rhea. Could, I'm not saying it will, but that would I be the they, only. I think they need to heat her back up again. If it was okay. last year, definitely. Last but year, this, yes. This, I think, right now they need to they need to heat her back up again. She's kind of been in on the back burner a little bit the last yeah. few months. No fault so, of Bianca's, but yeah, no fault of hers. Although she's been recording her, you know, whole. <laughs> news video or her you know her hulu show her hulu show but you know it's like i kind of thought about that and i was like why is she doing it and i was like well look at where the miz is at now so i guess okay makes sense Mm -hmm. may as well your light's really bright tonight like you're just what's going on with your white out face dude let's see if i can adjust that Dwayne has finally admitted it he says he hates to say it, but I see Rhea Ripley beating Nia Jax. Well, no shit, Sherlock. <laughs> One, <laughs> they're in Rhea's stomping grounds. So, uh-huh. although they could do an Edge Cena thing like they did, where, but who in their right mind wants to see Becky versus Nia other than Dwayne at WrestleMania? Not me. Not me either. I'm sorry. And in all honesty, I don't even want to see Jade versus Nia at WrestleMania. It's got to be Bianca and Jade at WrestleMania. That's fine. I'm okay with Bianca and Jade. I'm okay with Bianca and Jade. I am not. Nia's from Australia too? What? Hang on. I need to fact check that, Dwayne. Yeah, I'm calling I'm gonna, bullshit. I'm on it. I'm on it. I'm on now, it. I know there's a large like Islander population down there, especially with like the Tongans and whatnot. But I'm calling Holy bullshit shit, here. he's right. Well, where's the accent? No shit. Pardon my French. I'm cranky tonight. <laughs> Okay, she was born in Australia. She moved to Hawaii. So she's she was born there. I, I'm going to look. And her father, was, Joseph, was Johnson's grandfather. Peter might be his cousin. Interesting. Okay. Later lived in San Diego. I'm just looking to see, like, is her dad, like, in the military or something? Like, was it on an army base? Maybe not. So, okay. Well. No, but, um, all right. Okay, but she's not Dwayne known the pony. for being. Dwayne won the pony. Damn it. Figure to pony Dwayne, not a real one. But I, I do like I do like the fact that here I'm looking at you know Wikipedia because it's never wrong. And it's never uh, wrong. <laughs> number of injuries. Two people in her career. <laughs> what? 
says she, it says she's injured two people in her career. Hang on, let me. <laughs> That's from the sportster.com. Cause she hurt well, she hurt Becky. Cause she busted. Yeah. She broke Betsy or Becky Betsy. Betsy. Becky. <laughs> Can't talk, damn it. Lacerated face and a concussion. Kyrie Sane suffered a cut on her head during a match with Nia after she threw her to the steps. Uh, Mandy Rose, uh, rumored to injure Mandy Rose. Right. Diana Perrazzo stated she never walked away hurt after wrestling Jax. Uh, there's so there an injury right. ankle. Blah, blah, blah. Yeah. So anyway, let's okay. That's right. more time than anyway. I ever wanted to spend talking I was about Maya. But we've, 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 <laughs> those were accidents. Dwayne says those are accidents. <laughs> really? You it's... waited till I wasn't looking. You're a jerk. Who? You. What did I do? I just looked up in the corner. What did I do? I looked in the corner. That's been up there for that's been up there for about ten minutes. Well, I wasn't paying attention. Okay. All right. Would you feel better <laughs> if I put something different up there? Yes, please. <laughs> Not any better. Change it. I don't want Hangman Page hanging out above my head. No, no, no. Okay, I'm okay with that. No, I don't want Nicholas and Matthew. You don't want Matthew and Nick Thew? Yeah, exactly. <sighs> there we go. Leave, leave Danhausen. Leave Dan. Right, Especially when Zach gets in here because you know I'm going to move up and whoever it's going to be is going to be in my little picture space. You're a jerk. Yes. You're a jerk. I hate you. The possibilities are endless. I don't like it. Okay. Anyway, let's move uh, on. Let's guess let's put Naya Scott, up there. Scott, I, that's it. I don't I'm think done. there's I'm room in the corner Scott. for her head. I'm done with Scott. Okay. <laughs> All right. Oh, hey, Menders, okay, so do we, we talk- have some expo news? Uh, I don't think there was anything new. They do have the pricing up. If you want to check it out, I mm-hmm. sent you guys the link for that. that. It seems fairly reasonable. <clears throat> I was a little concerned about the hardy one, couple, but that's okay. There that were a couple I scratched my head on. Mariah May was a little up there, yeah. but you know. Eric was right. Eric Bischoff was right where I thought he was going to be. Yeah, Lawler um, was about where I thought he'd be at. Well, I'm waiting on Lawler because I'm going to wait and do the. If I do that one, I want to do the. Um, uh, 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 uh. What do I? Yeah, the, I want to do the professional pictures. Yeah. That That's the thing. Like a lot of these, I see the prices or whatever, and I think I'm going to wait and see who all has the photo ops and then go from there. Mm-hmm. Good plan. Can't believe I got to spend 40 bucks. Sky blue to sign Barry's freaking bill. I'm such a jerk. Um, let's see. Other than that, uh, update. I'm already halfway through my slim gym. Well, that. <laughs> so this is going faster than I thought it would. <laughs> Let me see. I don't think there was anything new. I think that was the only thing they said. I know they said, okay, all they've said, this was in the last 24 hours. Um, They just want to give a quick update on the premium photo ops and Q&A panels. They will be released. At this moment, we're waiting for final pricing and schedule preference from about half a dozen guests before committing the schedule to completion. We have about 90% of everything ready to go. But don't want to launch anything prematurely because confusion by having to later go back and change the photo times because they conflict with the panels, blah, 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 blah. We appreciate your patience. Our goal is to have all of our panels announced and on the website by the weekend. And our photo ops completely on sale at either the same time or a few days after. As as always, we'll continue to communicate with you on all things as they develop. Seven weeks till the expo. And Wait. as of four days ago, they are 80% sold out of their Saturday general admission passes for just the one day. Very nice. So, and it's it's going to be packed because 
80%, for those that aren't into percentages, it comes out to about 300 passes left. That's going to be a lot. So if you want to go, you got to jump on it. Oh, you know what? There is a couple things. I'm looking. Hold on. Six days ago. All right. Wait a minute. All right. I do have things. Six days ago. Okay. We had Jack Vaughn. We talked about him and his thing last week, right? About his match? Uh, yes. Or had it? Well, it says six. Yeah. Jack Vaughn versus Tony Gunn. Um, we also have, we talked about that one cause that was Mance, right? Uh huh. Okay. Um, the triple threat tag team match for the SCX tag team championships. We've got Heath and Rhino, which are the champions. We got the soul shooters versus the new, new rockers. I can't help but wonder if that was supposed to be snow and Janetti before Janetti had his issues. I don't know. Maybe not, because I think that's a, a an OVW kid that he's teaming with. So, so Apollo Star and Drew Skills, the Soul Shooters. We saw them last year. I thought I thought that sounded familiar. And then there's the new new. Some may know him as Avatar. Others, Al Snow. But on May March 30th in Indianapolis, it's the return of Leaf Cassidy. Uh-huh. What? That was his new that was his new rocker's name. All right. I'll snow. <laughs> okay. The fu- oh the fanny. Did you know Al Snow in. was in the new rockers? I did not. All right. So and then we have the fanny pack. Back in nineteen ninety six. Now I okay. find a picture. Okay. But that's all the new matches. Oh, and then Freya the Slayer versus Shauna Reed. Oh, yes. So. That'll be good. That will be good. That will all be right. very good. Yes. All right. Picture coming up to treat you, you sure? to the delight that is the, the new rockers. <laughs> oh, my goodness. That's, that's something, ain't it? That that's definitely something. Well, it's about as good as the picture I sent you earlier about the mattress salesman. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> Shivani and uh, Jr. <laughs> yeah. From the eighties. Yeah. Oh yeah. Man, they looked like used car salesmen from the eighties, didn't they? They did. Okay, let we've gone so far off the track or off the rail that we need to get back. So we were talking okay. about we were talking about you the press. were talking we about the press into, conference. Okay, we haven't gotten into the the finale with the uh, Seth Cody Roman and right. uh, and the Rock. Mm-hmm. A lot to digest there. It's uh, poor Seth. He kind of got pushed to the side in that whole thing. And Cody and the Rock are doing their business, and then you see Seth in the background, like they weren't sure what Seth's to do with him. Seth's right exactly. where he needs to be, though. I think he's right where he needs to be. Mm-hmm. I think they need to oh, show him as yeah. the underdog. Yeah. But <laughs> I don't know if you saw Big E after it was over. Um, just to give everybody's seen the clips already. Uh, Rock. Roman came out and said that since Cody backed out, he gets to choose his part opponent, chose The Rock. They start building up the match. It's going to be huge, biggest main event ever. And then Cody comes out, basically says this is bullshit. And uh, Dwayne, I'd like to see you take a slap from The Rock. Yeah. <laughs> and not because okay. I don't like you. Well, just, to, just to see the... But anyway. I've taken, I've taken a slap out. from Anakin Murphy. And I know how much that hurts. On, on the hand? On the hand, not even the face. Yes. The hand. Yes. So Cody comes out. Turn. He says that uh, he's challenging Roman instead. Then Roman says some shit about Dusty. 
And number one, also, that family tree looked awesome that they put up in the background. That Anawaii family tree, that looked so cool. Did you notice? Did you, there, did you notice it was at the was bottom? There was a name. Interest? It was at the bottom, uh-huh. right where it was going to be seen the entire time. Mm-hmm. Yep, one Jacob Fatu. Hopefully that's the I, harbinger that he's coming. I hope so. Fingers are crossed. Well, he's working with Book, so... Yeah. I've heard he's down working with Booker T, so... That's what I've heard. Hey, uh, Menders, I think our guest has arrived. Do you want to go ahead and uh, do the yes. honors? Yes. Yes. All right. So, joining us tonight is Zero One Videographer, a fantastic guy, Zach Gruber. <laughs> <Uber. laughs> <laughs> I have never been so excited to get somebody back on the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> oh, hi. Excuse my laundry situation here. It's it's all good. I don't, You're good. You're fine. I normally every time I do a podcast, I'm like, I always forget to close that door. <laughs> and, it's okay. Well, hang on. My dog likes to chew on clothes. He's actually over there chewing on clothes right now. And I don't I, Go I ahead. have I've had to sacrifice a few clothes. Give me a second. All right. You're good. All right, it's all good. The dangers of live uh, live broadcasting, as they say. Right. But uh, I can oh. tell you're, you're 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 giddy right now, Minders. You're excited about this. I am so giddy. I'm so giddy. I'm so giddy because first of all, we held off on all of our AEW talk until we got Zach in here with us, and I'm so Look. excited. Beautiful, beautiful. So, so Zach, you were on the shootout about what was it a month or two ago? Sometime and you, there. you dropped this a little teaser that you had a story about one uh, Florida Tony Khan, and we okay. pretty much that like two days later we said, okay, you're coming on jumping the rail to talk about this. Okay. So, so we had we had to bring it back. All right. You want me to take it away then? Go ahead. I don't think Mater Skin contained her excitement anymore. Let's rewind the clocks to. I'd say November 2019. Um, November 2019? Yes, the date's right. Okay, so I just went to AEW's eighth Dynamite and uh, thoroughly enjoyed myself. Thoroughly enjoyed myself. Was Um, that the Indianapolis show? That was the very, very first Indianapolis show. Uh, I was there. Made a, made invented by John Moxley and Darby Allen. Boo Darby yep, Allen, I, but you know whatever. Yep. Um, so, boo Darby Allen. That makes me sound like oh, boo. I don't like it. fuck him. Uh, I'll just say that <laughs> fuck Darby Allen. Uh, <laughs> you're a piece of shit. Uh, you're a terrible person. I'll just go ahead and say that. <laughs> anyway, um, so I'm enjoying myself. I'm enjoying all wrestling and stuff. And I'm just starting to get have a little fun with this new app that everyone's talking about called TikTok. <laughs> oh. So, so I get on TikTok, and you know I'm not making a whole lot of content. Um, I'm just I'm tr- I I tried to ride the wave of like virality or something. I had like a my very very first TikTok video before my account was taken down was at like 600,000 views. Like oh, wow. it was, it was at like it was like two hundred thousand views, the like the day it like I put it up because it and it was stupid. It was stupid. It was me getting in my car to Blink One Eighty Two. That's it. <laughs> um, the song First Date." For those of you who don't know, the li- the very first lines of the co- of the song are in my car. I just can't wait. So I get in my car. As soon as Tom DeLong goes in my car, and then the video stops, because it's just me in my car. That's it. Anyway, so I'm trying to ride the virality of it. I'm not having a, a very good time with it. Uh, no one's really caring about just me making terrible pancakes or whatever. <laughs> and I notice that there, some someone pops up on my on my feed. Uh, his name goes. His name goes. Uh, his name's Smith. Uh, Smithception is what he's known for. And he was making very anti WWE content. Uh, he was talking bad about, about WWE. And I was like, you know what? 
you know, he what he's saying, I don't agree with everything, but, you know, I'm going to talk about the good things of WWE. So I start talking about the good things of WWE, and I'm an asshole. I'm an I'm an I'm an opinionated asshole. So I was like, if everyone's going to talk about everything that's good about AEW and everything that's bad about WWE, I'm going to do I'm going to talk about everything that's good about WWE and everything that's bad about AEW. And oh, that started to make people mad. Um, yeah. But it got a little bit of a following out of it, so I'm riding that for a bit. So I I I dig my heels in, and I'm just. I'm I'm talking mad shit about AEW. I'm talking mad shit. Uh, someone, uh, it got it got so bad because like AEW fans, wrestling fans just in general are fucking weird. But AEW fans are also fucking weird. They're just weird people. Um, and I say that as someone who enjoys AEW. And if your favorite promotion is AEW, uh, <laughs> if your favorite promotion is AEW, you know, so be it. There's not, there's nothing wrong with that. Um, and but I was like, I was like, man, they're, they're they're fucking weird. They're so weird, in fact, that um, someone got really upset that I was talking shit about AEW because him and his grandpa used to watch wrestling and he was, he's dead now. So he's just ruining it for him. And I was like, I'm sorry. You don't have to watch my stuff. So he went and started reporting all of my videos uh, on TikTok just so that I would get my account taken down. Cause that's how you get someone's account taken down. You just report all their videos for a bunch of shit. And eventually the bots will just nix your account. And that's happened to me a couple times, and I'll get into that in a second. <laughs> and so anyway, I have this following, and I'm just digging my heels into AEW. And that guy ends up, like, I have to end up blocking that guy, which is something I don't do. Uh, and he ends up, like, finding my personal social media and, like, reaches out to me there and, like, starts, this is weird. Like I said, weird. <laughs> um, so I'm digging my heels in uh, about how much I, I really don't like AEW. Um, and blah, blah, blah. And I start to notice a pattern of every time I talk bad about AEW, my account gets reported for harassment and bullying. I'm like, what's going on here? Um, and I have to keep fighting these reports. I have to hope for my account back. I have to eventually make a backup account, which is my main account now. Um, <laughs> I can't get my backup account back because people just kept reporting it. Um, but then... AEW comes to Indianapolis again. And by this point, AEW has signed my second favorite wrestler, CM Punk. And CM Punk is on a fucking tear. Mm -hmm. Is on a tear. Just like banger matches, banger matches, banger promos. It's right in the middle of his feud with, with, uh, um, with Eddie Kingston. So okay. one, one week he's having a match. One week having killer promo, next week having a match. I've never seen CM Punk wrestle before, and like that—that that was my goal. I'm here to see CM Punk wrestle, or at least cut a really fucking cool promo. Right. One week he's wrestling, next week he's promo. One week he's wrestling, next week promo. Indianapolis rolls around. <laughs> Indianapolis rolls around, and um. I'm like, oh, what's going to happen? <laughs> what's going to happen? CM Punk is in a backstage segment with Eddie Kingston. He's not on TV. He doesn't cut a promo. <laughs> and he doesn't have a match. It is a 30-second backstage segment of Tony Schiavone going, oh, what's going on back there? <laughs> oh. it's, it's, that's what's going on. And Probably like, pre-taped the week before, by the way. Probably, probably pre-taped. Like, I was like, what the fuck is this? <laughs> so, I'm like, whatever. I just saw Brian Danielson wrestle uh, Rocky Romero. I'm seeing Lee Moriarty. Fucking love Lee Moriarty. Best, uh, best wrestler in North America today. Um, and I'm like, you know, fucking whatever. Uh I also hate Cody Rhodes, by the way. Just keep that in mind. I hate Cody Rhodes. Not so much these days, but I do hate Cody Rhodes. And, and that's like another thing. That's another thing. 
for first that that Indianapolis show, that first Indianapolis show, he comes out with his fucking suit and he's like, oh, I'm Cody Rhodes, hell, I can't wait to come back here to Indianapolis." I'm like, "Uh, go fuck yourself, um, get the fuck out of here." So, next thing, um, Tony Khan comes out, fucking goof. He comes out, he's like, "Hi, everybody, it's me, Tony Khan." Mark, nine seriously. weeks from tonight. Take this, uh, take this down, take this down. This is getting really fucking annoying. So he's like, huh? Ah. And he's like, okay. hey, everybody, I'd like to introduce you all to Cody Rhodes. And I'm like, I'm like, fucking goddamn it. So Cody comes <laughs> out and he's like, oh, look at me. I'm Cody Rhodes. Oh, adrenaline in my soul. And my dad is Cody Rhodes. Just, you know, the whole shebang. <laughs> then he's, uh, Tony Khan goes, there's someone. Who would really like to see all of you? And he's going to come out right now. CM Punk. And the music hits. And CM Punk comes out. And I'm like, fucking finally. I get to see. He, you know, he comes out. He does the thing. And he grabs the microphone. And I go, what's this man about to say? Oh, man. What's this man about to say? Ugh. This is my CM Punk impression. It's terrible. I'm terrible at impressions. But <laughs> ha! you guys are you guys are from Indiana. You're treating me. I'm from Illinois. You guys are treating me like a Hoosier. Man. <laughs> but you know who's a Hoosier that really like to see you? Ruby Soho. And the man. Oh. <laughs> talks again. And I'm just like, and I love Ruby Soho. She came out with Billy Rock that night. Uh, wrestled nice. Charlie Cruel uh, on AEW Dark Evolution. I was like, oh, that's sweet. You know, Billy Rock out here with, with, uh, with a little Billy Rock, yeah, it's fun. So, and I was like, okay. <sighs> Third time I go to AEW, Punk's injured. Nothing you can do about it, you know. Right. Nothing, nothing you can do about it. Punk's injured. But Punk comes back from injury. <laughs> Punk comes back from injury, and oh, <laughs> I almost forgot this part of the story. So. Punk comes back from injury. They announce Collision. Um, my best friend, who I've been to every AEW show with, texts me. Yeah, I just got backstage passes to Collision. <laughs> and I was like, excuse me? And he's like, he's like, yeah, um, another buddy of mine is a bigger TikToker than you. He doesn't do any wrestling content, but they want um, – they want – like people to talk about collision that aren't wrestling fans to like kind of spread out the the stuff. And I was like, that makes sense. Damn it. Why is it you (laughs) someone that I've been to every single AEW show with and someone who has been in videos with me at AEW shows and he gets to meet CM Punk. He gets to see CM Punk wrestle he gets to, you know, he gets to see all that stuff. But, you know, it's fine. You know, I'm happy for him. Happy for you, Shimer. <laughs> then I see CM Punk. Uh, he unveils the real world championship. It has a big X on it. It's like, I'm straight edge. And I, I Zach Ruber, am straight edge. And I found straight edge through CM Punk. Like, like that's the whole reason I don't smoke, I don't drink, I don't do drugs. I've never smoked a cigarette, never smoked weed. The only time I've ever drank alcohol is by accident. I've never done, never touched anything because of that man. I'm like, this is my fucking champ right here. <laughs> Hell yeah. And I'm so excited because All Out's in a couple weeks. I'm like, I'm going to buy tickets to All Out. Mm-hmm. And so I buy tickets to All Out. <laughs> And I, I make my way up to a friend's house. Well, all in happens. The, the brawl in, you know, it takes place. And Tony Khan, who can't shut the fuck up to save his life, is radio <laughs> silent for a week. <laughs> and I'm like, what is happening? And I, I am in Chicago at my buddy Andrew's house. And we and we turn on. I think they announced it on Collision. Yeah, because we we turned on. We we were having a pay per view party because we were going to watch Collision, and whatever WWE pay per view was taking on uh, taking place at that time. Is with deep regret 
that I have to fire Phil CM Punk Brooks. And I was just like, Oh, you were pissed. You are watching me, you billionaire <laughs> fuck. You are watching me and you want to ruin my life. And you want you you want to ruin my life, you fuck. You piece of shit fuck. I hate you so much. I hate you. But you know, when one person's watching out for you, <laughs> another person's watching out for you. Because a couple weeks later, WWE announces John Cena is going on tour with <laughs> WWE. And I'm just like, hell yeah. <laughs> I haven't seen John Cena wrestle since 2009, 2010. He was feuding with Randy Orton in Legacy. Again, fuck Cody Rhodes. Um, <laughs> rewinding back, I forgot. Fuck Cody Rhodes. Because he he's out there with Ruby Soho and Jumpin' Bean uh, fucking Tony Khan and CM Punk. And he's out there. And of course, this was what Cody Rhodes would do. Of course it is. Cody Rhodes is like, now we have a we have a fan here tonight who has been battling cancer. And I'd like to bring them down to the ring right now. And I was just like, this is kind of sweet, but way up to <laughs> the fan into the ring. And he goes, you've won a battle that none of us can even imagine uh, winning. And I want you to win one more battle. And I was like, all right, what are you doing? And he, <laughs> he looks around. He goes, we all know that I don't like to put people over but i'm gonna put this guy over tony and he lays down and he's like tony count the three and this guy pins cody rhodes in the ring and it's like one two three this guy has a pinfall victory for cody rhodes and i was like go fuck yourself you piece of shit shit. uh i hate you i hate you so much uh but yeah that is that is my i am convinced that Tony Khan, with how much he loves to 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 book for Reddit and Twitter, um, <laughs> and not book to make money, because you know those ticket sales are hella down. Mm-hmm. Uh, he's he's out there on TikTok, and he's like, "Oh, look at this fucking long haired hippie looking motherfucker." What's he doing? <laughs> That's right. Oh, I hate, life. I hate, I hate. But here's the thing, like. It'd be one thing if I was like, I hate AEW, I don't watch it, blah, 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 blah. Because then he could just scroll on. He probably saw one of my videos where people are like, you hate AEW, don't you? <laughs> and I and I play the game. Um, uh, wow, really? Does Zach, really? I play, no, I play the game. Uh, does Zach really hate AEW or am I just a fucking mark? <laughs> and I'm like, all right, let's 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 play. and I play the Price is Right theme and everything, and I show me like pictures of me at AEW. I show pictures that I took at AEW. I show me on AEW television twice. I've been on AEW television twice. Um, nice. One for uh, one for Phoenix's entrance and one for Willow Nightingale's entrance. I'm like, I'm on TV having a good time. So do I hate AEW? And I've been there four times. So do I hate AEW or are you just a fucking mark? <laughs> You're just a fucking mark. Thank you for playing. And, I just... and it was probably Tony. It was I'm probably Tony. I'm convinced that he was like, oh, this guy actually watches my show. I'm going to make sure to ruin his fucking life. <laughs> so. Oh, wait. Yeah. Put, up, put up AJ's comment. We got we got a comment. Me and Barry also beef with Cody when we went to AW in Champagne. He gave a random kid in the crowd a hundred dollar bill. Screw you, Cody. <laughs> We're working adults with bills. You could have gave us a hundred bucks. So <laughs> it's hey Reb, Reb, put your mic down. Yeah. Put your mic down no. so people can actually want... hear what you're saying. I didn't want oh. you guys to hear the popcorn. No, yeah, we fair. know. That's fair. <laughs> All I could hear is like I kind of hear him talking in the background, but there was nothing there. Can you please take this down? It's you don't like the oh, you and Matalus. Matalus and 
Nick View. Nick View. No, that's not any better. That one's already well, been up there. Here's the thing, though. <laughs> I love the Young Bucks, man. I do. I love the Young Bucks. And I love Kenny. I love Hangman. I love most of the elite. Fuck Cody Rhodes. And, <laughs> uh, fuck Marty Skrull. And, you know, that type of shit. But, um, but like, I don't... That's the thing. Like, I see... I see this show, and I'm just like... You know... Hmm. <laughs> there, there's, there's so much like, there's so much good talent there that could be doing such great things. Like, here's my thing. I, <laughs> I ran two wrestling shows, right? Uh huh. Two wrestling shows. Both times, I spent way more money than I needed to to draw the same amount of people that I would have drawn had I not spent way more money than I needed to. It's just simple facts. Right. And I just keep seeing all these people getting signed. And I'm just like, yeah, it's going to help. Yeah, it's going to help. Why don't you just take someone like Billy Starks? Get her the fuck off Ring of Honor. And, well, Dwayne, you've, 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 you've missed out. Like, <laughs> sorry, sorry, sorry to tell you. Dwayne Dwayne's different. We're 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 all used to it. <laughs> yeah. Um but like take someone like Billy Starks and just like build her up. Like not mm -hmm. just don't have her just lose to Athena. Talent. Also, why why is Athena on Ring of Honor? Like it's it's one thing like if Athena's on Ring of Honor and she's on this undefeated streak to build up the program, but like you're not you're not building up the program. Mm -hmm. You can't just sit here and go, Oh yeah, Athena's got this. <laughs> Yeah. Let me just <laughs> sign Kazuchika Okada <laughs> real, real quick. Yeah. Uh, well, uh, they put Kingston on AWTV with the Ring of Honor belt. They can do the same thing with Athena. Yeah, I think he hates the Kingdom. Women. All the other Ring of Honor champions are on there. I think he hates women. I I truly believe that that Tony Ooh. Khan hates women. You heard it here first. Tony Khan misogynist. Mm -hmm. That's a that's a scoop. I think I like look 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 at the adjective. <laughs> <laughs> Women. <laughs> uh, As corny says, people and women. <laughs> people and women. Well, that's the thing. Uh, like you, like these women. Like you, you just keep signing these women. Mm -hmm. And I love, I love, I love that Willow Nightingale and Billy Starks and Athena and all these fantastic, talented women uh, are getting a spot to shine. Uh, it's it's great, but. It's you can only do so much in fifteen minutes at nine fifteen p.m. Mm -hmm. uh, on a Wednesday, uh, and whereas how many women's programs does WWE have going on right now? Like, granted, they have four or um, five. They have like five hours of programming across the week if you don't count NXT. But then again, AEW has four hours of programming of content throughout the week, and no, uh, they have. Five. They have five. They do have five. They do have five. You forget. I forget mean, Rampage. I forget mean, Rampage. The show nobody watches. Everyone does. I mean, Rampage. <laughs> did, did you know that that uh, big time small wrestling, uh, the reality show about uh, about yeah. midget wrestling, is, yeah. is outdrawing Rampage? I did. I knew that. <laughs> like that. two weeks in a row. Like it's outdrawing Rampage. I'm just like, <laughs> damn. All right. <laughs> but. And that's ridiculous, oh but yeah. Anyway, uh, of course, Dwayne watches a rampage. Of course, there's nothing. Like, here's the yeah, thing. nothing wrong with it. Here's no. the thing. I said, but I, I think I do on a Friday night. <laughs> I don't watch it because I don't watch it not because it's not a good show. Because there have been, now granted, the the only rampage I've ever been to. Whoa, it was a fucking stinker. Holy shit, I was born. <laughs> that was like, I was like, damn, I hate that I'm the guy that's like, I'm staying until the show lights come on, or I'm staying until the house lights come up. Like, that's my rule when I go to shows. I settle the house lights. I'm, and I'm, I'm just sitting, I'm sitting here and I'm just like, God damn. <laughs> I am watching Orange Cassidy versus QT Marshall in a lumberjack match. <sighs> <laughs> Oh, Nothing. boy. It's like, 
That's one like, where I'm surprised hate. both the lumberjacks didn't, or all the lumberjacks didn't just turn on both of them. Honestly. Well, here's I again. I love Orange Cassidy. That's the thing. Like, here, <laughs> oh, that man is one of the best, best wrestlers yes. going today. Okay, I'm gonna say it. I'm sick of the gimmick. I'm sick of the gimmick. Yeah. yeah. He's a good wrestler. I'm sick of the gimmick. Yeah, well, that's the thing. They've, they've kind of evolved it over time. I mean, he's still lazy. He's still yeah. But you know. If he's not for you, he's not for you. A lot of people hate Roman Reigns. Um, I think best I wrestler going Reigns today. Too. I'm not a huge fan of Roman Reigns either. I mean, well, I get what he's doing. I understand it. Well, it's, it's kind of the same thing. Not, like, not knocking it, but yeah, it's it's kind of the same deal. I hate Cody Rhodes, and <laughs> it was and a like, fiery passion. I I do. I hate Cody Rhodes. <laughs> not so. And I think here's the thing. And I don't want it this to be Zach comes on jumping the rail to just shit on AEW for like two hours. <laughs> Please do. Uh, <laughs> but like, that's actually the title we, of the episode. <laughs> I think I I enjoy watching Cody more on WWE. Me too. And maybe it's be, and maybe it's because I I just like WWE more. But he comes off way more not genuine. But he fits more. Yeah. He's more likable. Like, he, not even that, because he's still. That's the thing. He's still doing the fucking <laughs> suit. <laughs> <laughs> My How about professional? Like, maybe, maybe he's more professional. Yeah, on he's WWE. Still, he's I don't know. Still doing the same thing though. Yeah, it's like he hasn't changed. He's still he's... putting on the matches. He's still going over every fucking body that that gets in his way. He is. Maybe it's the lack of Tony that's making them seem. <laughs> Maybe it's relaxed. the lack of Tony. He's, he's doing the same. I think he just fits better. He's doing the same thing that he was doing. <laughs> he's he's doing the same thing that he was doing in AEW, uh, minus stupid fire spots and <sighs> uh, and what have you. But he's doing he's doing it all the same stuff, and I'm just like, okay, maybe it just fits better because I just. And the, and that was another thing, like CM Punk in AEW. That's my favorite. That's my second favorite wrestler. My first tattoo was going to be a CM Punk tattoo. It kind of is, not really. But I got a straight edge tattoo. I have two of them. But it was, I like I like he came back to AEW. I watched for like a month. I was like it was like appointment viewing, and then I was like I'm not appointment viewing anymore. You know, it's what it is. It's just. For a couple but, of weeks, it was the best show on TV. Was Collision? Yeah, yeah. Punk was there. Yeah, and and it didn't last. Nope. That's the damn thing. Punk. That's like, or damn, damn books. <laughs> it's like you know, it's there's just something about certain characters that just fit, and like when like the like QT Marshall, he. You don't run a school if you're a shitty wrestler. You know what I mean? You don't you don't run the nightmare factory. You don't train people well um if you're a shitty wrestler. Um now I'm not the biggest fan of the people that have come out of the nightmare factory. Um but that's neither here nor there. But you don't get to, like I believe that QT Marshall I don't think that he's a charisma vacuum. Um I think they just Gave him a bunch of dumb fucking storylines that you didn't get. Because, <laughs> like, you had, I mean, I remember it fondly because I was a kid and it's fun to look back at. But Daniel Bryan, Bryan Danielson, one of the greatest wrestlers to have ever lived. One of his first storylines in WWE was, he's a virgin? I gotta <laughs> fuck this guy. No, I gotta fuck this guy. No, I gotta His fuck wife him. and his sister, by the way, <laughs> in that storyline. <laughs> I gotta fuck this guy. Uh, Wait a minute, you fucked before, ladies? <laughs> I said I'm vegan. Not a... <laughs> like we about got a spit take. I like, almost it almost happened. Like, Ralph almost lost it. Like he's out here flirting with. Well, I think it was Gail Kim or Eve Torres at the time. But he's just like he's like, ladies, come on. I said I'm vegan. <laughs> I'm fucking all the time. <laughs> Like you like imagine, imagine I patch Brian Danielson like doing that now. Like 
it's it'd be ridiculous. Yeah. And I think like I don't like in my head the like you could the greatest wrestling match if the greatest wrestling match in the world happens and nobody cares did it actually happen? Like true. That's that's kind of where that's kind of where I see it. Like and that's that was kind of my that's I think that's the thing about AEW. Like you're bringing in Will Ospreay, probably Kazushiko Okada, probably Mercedes Monet. You have Kenny Omega Rob. on the roster. Okay, like, Rep, go find that comment again that AJ put up. Probably, probably. bringing in Monet. Probably. They're bringing in Monet. Probably. You know, it's nothing confirmed. It's nothing confirmed. <laughs> Just because that the next the show in Boston. It's called the statement. It does not mean it's bringing in. Money. It's not called the statement. It's it's called the statement. Bo- I thought it was boss. No, it's a big boss. Business. It's, it's big, the business. State- big, big business. Big business. It's big business from Boston. Yeah, and, and there's money signs for the. There's money signs everywhere, you know. <laughs> but you know, I could die on the way to work tomorrow. Am I going to die on the way to work tomorrow? Probably not. But. <laughs> You know, hey, <laughs> you're talking to the guy that like heard people go. They, I heard all the fucking CM Punk hints before the first dance, which is fucking stupid, by the way. That was the second show. Why are you calling it the first dance? Um, <laughs> Tony, <laughs> but I, I saw all this shit, and I kept hearing the fucking. <laughs> I kept seeing and hearing all the hints at CM Punk coming in. And I was just sitting to myself thinking, well, he doesn't. You know what I mean? Like, we all knew Cody was winning at Mania last year. We all knew it. And yeah. what happened? He didn't come. Yeah. Yeah. He didn't come. I mean, yeah, he, he, it didn't happen. Yeah. But is Mercedes going to come into AEW? Probably. But, <laughs> probably. Probably. I okay. would bet money on it. So here's my question. You're a CM Punk fan. Right. You spend some time in Chicago. Right. Have you been to Mindy's Bakery? No. No. Oh. Because I, every time that I go to Chicago, I bring my girlfriend with me. Um, it's weird calling her my girlfriend. We've been together almost 13 years. 12, 13 years. <laughs> right? 12? 12. <laughs> almost 12 years. I lo- You lose count after a while. Like, we got together in 2012. It's 2024 now. But yeah. Coming this March, it will be 20, it'll be 12, 24 years. It'll be 12 years. <laughs> um, that we, we it really just it. feels that way. It just yeah, it feels <laughs> feels that way. It lose count. But every time we go there, um, she is very particular about where we go. Um, so because most of the time we go to Chicago, we're there for wrestling. And while she enjoys it, it's not really her thing. Mm-hmm. Um, she did not come to all out with me. She stayed back and I think either watched uh, reality TV or played Sims. I don't know, <laughs> one of the two. She did not. She did not care uh, to go to all out. Um, but so we go to the places that we always hit is Pequod's Pequod's yeah. Pizza. Uh, that is the one place we always hit, and that's the only place we hit up. Yeah. I got, I got a lot of stories from Chicago. Um, yeah. AJ, yeah. what happened last year? The tribal chief reminded everyone what the pecking order is. That's all it was. He'll do it again at Mania Forty. Yeah. Really, I really, seeing, Reb. I keep seeing that guy's face. <laughs> right. And I just like look at those nostrils. Those things are just. <laughs> you could park a car in there. Filled with cocaine. <laughs> Um. Anyway, I have a lot of stories from Chicago. Um, <laughs> that are they're 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 fun. They're not all wrestling related, but they're fun. Um, I lost me and Angel collectively lost six hundred dollars in a day uh, at Riot Fest. Um, <laughs> that's a fun story. Oh jeez. Uh, they uh. Long story short, you know, wrestlers full of carnies. You know what else is full of carnies? 
carnivals. Carnivals. <laughs> carnivals. Carnivals are full of carnies. <laughs> and I tried winning. We have we have two pugs in this house. We're we're a pug family. And there was a gigantic stuffed pug. And I was like, I'm gonna win that pug. How do I win that pug, sir? And he goes, uh, oh, it's a dollar a play. Um and you just have to pull these balls out of this like, you know, thing. And each ball has a number on it or has like a thing on it. And it, you know, if you get to a hundred, you get whatever you want. I'm like, all right. So I play for a little bit, dollar a play. I get a gold ball. And I'm like, what's a gold ball mean? He's like, all right, you get to a hundred, you win 200 bucks. Um, and you get anything you want, $10 a play. I was saving my money that weekend. I'm like, fuck yeah. All right. $10 a play. Boom, boom, boom. Get another gold ball. $400. Uh, 20 bucks a play. I'm like, all right. Boom, 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 boom. Uh, another gold ball. 800 bucks. $40 a play. Um, at this point, I've dragged Angel over here. I'm like, ah, oh, we're going to win some big fucking money. But <laughs> now we've played so much that we are now trying to win our money back. <laughs> and, <laughs> and we are five... We are at ninety five. We have to get to a hundred, and we oh. are, and we're, and I was just, and we, we, we calculate it. Did I say we lost six hundred bucks in a day? Uh huh. It was three hundred. It was three hundred. Um, oh. <laughs> but we, we collectively look, and we're like, we have collectively spent, like, um. Now, now I'm thinking about it. It was like four hundred to five hundred bucks that day. All right. So I forgot. All. So we. We calculate it. We're like, okay, we've lost like 300 bucks collectively. We need to stop. Like, this is how people lose their houses. Um, so we stop. We walk away from 800 bucks, five points away from, oh. uh, you know, I could have played 40 more dollars and won that shit, but no, it wouldn't have happened. Anyway. Um, so do you only watch the main wrestling or do you watch uh, TNA? Do you watch Impact or no? I watch as much as I mentally can. Gotcha. So, so does I, that mean yes or no? You don't watch it. So <laughs> I haven't watched anything recent. You know, mm-hmm. uh, I keep up with what's going on. Um, I, I you know I keep up with what's going on. One thing I I do, I I do do. Uh, Doo doo is <laughs> I subscribe to Deadlock Pro. It's Patreon, and I don't know if you guys are aware of Deadlock at all. Uh, so, I am not. So Deadlock Pro is three guys that got big on YouTube through um, wrestling video gaming. Like they would just like make funny videos playing wrestling video games. They got so big that they were like, "All right, let's start a podcast." And they got a really big podcast going and that got really popular. And then they were like, okay, let's start a wrestling promotion. Fuck it. Let's start a wrestling promotion. (laughs) And they, you know, they're one of the biggest indies going on the East coast right now. Um, Anyway, they was a long way of me going. I subscribed to their Patreon and on the $5 tier and every week they will they will show a match and then they will commentate over it. Not like, oh, look at this guy going. He's like, like, oh, look at this fucking guy. Like they, they pick the best matches. They pick the worst matches. And they're, they were TNA kids. I was not a TNA kid. I was a, I was watching John Cena with my fucking foam belt, um, listening to "You Can't See Me" on repeat, and. <laughs> You can't see me the album. Not 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 the time is now. I know the I know the song. I'm listening to Bad Bad Man. I'm listening to Don't Wanna Fuck With Us. I'm listening to uh Chang Gang is the click. I'm I'm learning all that shit. Uh-huh. Is Bad Mad Band the one with the A Team themed music video? Yes. Yes. Okay. Bad Bad Man is the A Team music video. And so what they will do, like they will often either watch old CZW matches. With yeah. Justice Payne, Nick fucking Cage, <laughs> right. Zandig. Um, they'll watch that shit. Love that. Fate Love Nature. watching that stuff. Um, Joe Gacy back in the day. Yeah. I watched uh, 
they they just did uh, El Generico versus Justice Pain, and the match was fucking wild. Um, <laughs> and or they'll do like old TNA matches, and you know it's it's fun to like get their thoughts on like old TNA and whatever. And sometimes they'll watch really really bad matches and just make fun of it. Um, the NBA ten man tag that WWE WWE did back in like 2009, 2010. Oh, I remember that. Yeah, yeah like they just they, they do commentary over that. But that because Denver didn't have the foresight to book a show during the playoffs, and right, they right. went up having to cancel. So, <laughs> so that was like that was that's kind of like my reintroduction during that time period. I I I kept up during the broken uh, the broken mat era. Um, cause I really love the broken mat stuff. I love, I love stupid shit in wrestling. I like, I really do. I really <laughs> like stupid, stupid shit in wrestling. Um, it's, it's the fucking best. Uh, there was a promotion in Indianapolis that ran for a while called, uh, Bizarro Lucha. They went under around. Heard uh, of that one. Yep. Around, and. I knew I, I didn't know what I was in for. I went to yeah, uh Chris Young Veterans are showing up at DPW soon. Um but there I knew like it was something that I never saw before with wrestling. Um because indie wrestling before I went to Glory Pro was just shindies. That's all I knew. And I didn't know what you could do with with wrestling. So I yeah. go to this fucking brewery in Indianapolis that's just a hole in the wall. There's a wrestling ring that's up to my shins. And <laughs> I was like, uh, <laughs> and, and you have Thunder Kitty, oh, geez. Adam Slade, <laughs> um, Bradley Prescott the fourth, um, fucking Levi Everett. Okay. I, th- I think I think uh, Billy Starks is also there as Pizza Probably. Cat Junior. Pizza Cat Junior. And uh-huh. they're chain wrestling a roll of toilet paper. <laughs> and I thought, this is fucking wrestling right here, man. Like this is that shit. <laughs> like this is a, what? Uh, <laughs> fucking um, uh, I almost said Kyle Piper. Uh, Justin Kyle. Justin Kyle was there. He walks up to me. I've never been that close to a man big that big before. Uh, at that point, he's huge, he's huge. He's a big boy. And I have a redacted shirt over my shoulder, and he just takes it and just rubs his nuts on it, and just gives it and then drops it on the floor and walks away. And I was like, "This is that shit. <laughs> like, I love this place." Um, Holly you're talking Kyle, about, Holly just, Justin oh. Kyle at, at, at Noble for zero one, yeah, when he was in war games, right? Uh, so you know, me, me and my friend Bari, right. we're sitting there, we had brought our own, we had brought our own chairs down to Noble because we were tired of sitting in the folding chairs, <laughs> right? <laughs> See, AJ, ask Minder for her Justin Kyle story. <laughs> so we're sitting there, I already, he hated me. He already hated me. I'm not sure what I had done, but it, it was Probably a mutual a sign. hate. No, I didn't. This was before I was doing signs. So this was before signs. I don't know. We had a mutual hate. We didn't like each other. I'd seen him at New Wave Pro, mm-hmm. and I was like, okay. And we were sitting there, and Barry and I were kind of complaining about him being in the, um, in the War Games match. And all of a sudden, he comes up right behind us. Puts his hand on each of our shoulders and says, "You guys enjoying the show?" And I was like, "Yes, sir." <laughs> I was like, Barry and I are like gripping each other's hand as tight as we can. Like, oh dear God, he's going to kill us. We are now dead. <laughs> but that's our Justin Kyle story. We we oh. were freaking out. It was funny. Yeah, he's just <sighs> he's just such a big dude. He is. And I- and I watch Holly Cromwell eliminate him from a battle royal using magic. <laughs> like she used witch's magic to slow down time and move out of the way so that Justin Kyle would go over the top rope. 
And I was like, this is what I need. <laughs> you need this in your life. Match of the year 2021, I think it was. 2021, 2022. Match of the year. Invisible Man versus Invisible Stan from Let's Joey Janela Spring Break. Bryce like, Ribsburg with the sunglasses. That's that shit right there. I love that shit. I love dumb shit in wrestling. It's, <laughs> it's, it's the best because it's wrestling. Is mm-hmm. fucking stupid, and it's, also, not to nothing. Credit the Dave Praise Act for calling that damn match with a straight, like it's a regular match. Calling it straight, you have, you have Bryce Rensburg calling it straight. You the have Guitaro. Uh, it's it's nuts, and that's that. <laughs> that's what I like, man. I like dumb death matches. I love, uh, I love great death matches. I love dumb death matches. Uh, I don't like bad death matches. That, yeah. There's a difference. I don't like I, oh, I like, yeah. I like dumb death matches. I don't like bad death matches. Um, one of the best matches I've ever seen live was <laughs> Matt Cardona versus Nick Gage. Oh, you were there for that? I was. I I made the trek. Wow. I I had to. I was a big Zack Ryder guy because yeah. ZR Uh-oh. that's my guy. Like, there's a wrestler named Zack, and it yeah. kind of sounds like my name, <laughs> and he's and no one likes him. Like how no one likes me. Like this is awesome. So, so I made the trek to. I, I texted my buddy Shimer, who who got to meet. I see. You. <laughs> There's your bugs. Give me one moment. I'm gonna have to take care of my dog real quick. Hang on one second. Okay. No problem. Yes, I do. So this is going. This is this is going better than I imagined. I know. Me too. <laughs> I hear you. Uh, uh, speaking oh. of bad matches, Benders, I think. Next week we are doing. Uh, is it next week we're doing the watch along, or is that the week after? Week after, I thought. Okay, because next week is the PWI segment. Yes. Well, I think our I think our watch along is going to be. No way. What? Yeah, Peter, is it? Hold on, I got to think on. about I got what got happened. It. I got it. I got my schedule here, but anyway, our next watch along, I think we're going to be watching the Fish Market Street Fight from TNA Destination <laughs> X 2008. I think it was. <laughs> Team 3D versus Curry Man and Shark Boy. <laughs> All right. And we may have to get AJ in on this one because we definitely got to get AJ in on this one. If we're watching Shark Boy and Curry Man, uh huh. So you're, you're yeah. Once, what, Next once week Zach is PWI. His... The week after that is the watch along. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So Zach's back now. So you need to tell him what our watch along is going to be in two weeks. Okay. Okay. So every month we on one episode we'll do a watch along of of a match. Uh, we just started doing this last month with Hogan and the Sheik on the anniversary. Okay. But I think this month, uh, in two weeks, we're actually going to be doing the Fish Market Street Fight from TNA. The Fish Market Street Fight? Team 3D <laughs> versus uh, Curry Man and Shark Boy. <laughs> and it's, uh, it's everything you would hope for it to be, just from what I've heard of your preferences. <laughs> It's it's the angle when the 3D had to make like 250 to be able to wrestle. They had to cut weight, Ooh. so they had to get on a scale before the match. And uh, <laughs> that's good stuff. So I'm sitting here thinking about like, all right, what what, what are they? What type of stuff are they watching? And I was like, do you need a match? Because I can give you my matches from whenever I wrestled, and you can talk about how bad they are. Because <laughs> God, Let's do it. Send them all to Reb. We'll, we'll do it. We'll do it. I, yeah, there is a reason I am behind the camera nowadays. <laughs> I have had, out of all the matches that I have filmed, I have three of them. I have one from Winslow, Indiana. I have one from Dale, Indiana, from my show. Let me tell you a fucking story about this fucking show. <laughs> Well, the last one was from Paw K three. I I fucked up the uh, I fucked up the John Cena five moves of doom because I didn't want to kill anybody. Sorry, Ben. I didn't want to fucking drop you on your neck. I I wanted to give you an F you, not a burning hammer. You fuck. <laughs> Sorry that I put you down and hit you with a spear instead and knocked my knees into your knees. You fuck. You short fuck. <laughs> Wait, who did you fight? Okay, so. He said short. Now I want to know who he fought. <laughs> so, Render? Ben Sheeran is okay. a is a manager from Kentuckyana. 
He's just a manager. Originally a ref, now he's a manager. Piece of shit. Love him to death. Piece of shit. Um, <laughs> and it was 2022. I'm going to have things back. It's 2022. And everyone's talking. Everyone's putting out their list of who they want to fight in 2022. And I put my dad and Ben Sheeran. Like that would like just, you know, whatever. Because I'll film for Paradigm and he'd, he'd come out and he'd just be like, fuck you, Zach, behind the camera. Like, and I'd, I'd be like, I'd just be behind the camera going, like, fuck you, Ben. Just like, <laughs> and Chad French, who runs the yearly pocket show to raise money for, the, for his local animal shelter, um, he was like, you want to fight Ben at Pocket? I was like, yeah, why not? Like, I'll fight yes. back, okay? And he was like, all right, I'm going to be in the match, too. And I was like, okay, Chad, you're also not a wrestler. This is going to be a bad match. He's like, who cares? <laughs> I'm like, all right. And then he puts, he, he has, he turns it into a handicap match between me and, Ch- it's me and Chad versus... Lobo Okami, uh, Ben Sheeran, and Flash Thompson. And then I get to the fucking back. And I'm like, all right, what are we doing? Let's run through this thing. What are we doing? <laughs> and they just crack open beers and just go, I don't know. I was like, <laughs> like what do you mean? We don't know. Three out of the five people in this match are not wrestlers. <laughs> I have had 10 months. I've had 10, ow, 10, 10 hours of training total. Chad's never wrestled before. He's only ever done battle royals. And Ben's trained to be a referee. What the fuck do you mean? Uh, we'll call it out there, brother. Like, what do you mean? No. What are we doing? And they're like, all right. Uh, we'll do this. We'll do this. We'll do this. I was like, no, I need to be Macho Man right here. I got to know what we're doing. I got to know where to be. Like, and it was uh, fucking Chad. Chad's like, yeah, I'm going to be the one uh, making the pin. And I was like, I was like, Chad, this is my feud. I'm the one feuding with Ben. You're not feuding with Ben. And he's like, you fucking, you fucking big league me right now. I was like, I was like, I got to be the one to pin Ben. <laughs> and he's like, it's like okay. me with CMC. Yeah. It's like, like, it's like you and CMC. <laughs> and he's like, all right, what's your finish? I was like, I'm going to hit the John Cena five moves of doom. And he's like, okay, can you get Ben up? And I was like, yeah, I can get Ben up. <laughs> Three fifty, you know, he's, he's a short bowling ball of a guy <laughs> and love you, Ben. And, <laughs> and it had been a bit, I was squatting around 400. Like, my 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 squat PR was like three ninety five, and I was like, if I can squat three ninety five, and it's been like a year, a year of atrophy, I can do like here. Oh, I can do. Uh, I can pick up Ben for the for the fu. Um, so I pick up Ben, but it's and I practice picking up Ben beforehand. I'm like, yeah, this is easy. I got this, and I. When we're in the middle of the match, and I hit the five moves of doom, I hit shoulder block, shoulder block, um, duck the clothesline, uh, spin out, uh, spin out side slam, five knuckle shuffle. I pick him up, and he's just a little too over here. Like his head's right here. His head's supposed to be over here. So mm-hmm. it's like right here. And I was like, if I f- turn him over, he's gonna go right on his neck. I'm not killing a man today. Like, like. <laughs> I am not I'm not getting paid. None of none of us are getting paid. This is a charity show. Um so I put him down because I panic. I don't know what to do in this situation. And um he just starts talking shit like, oh yeah, I knew you couldn't fucking do it. I blah blah blah. And just loud as can be, Chad just goes, spear him. <laughs> I just, so I just jump and, and spear this guy. Knees knocking to knees. And my dog's gonna tear at my door. I rent this place. <laughs> I understand. 
Well, Menders, if I was ever to get in the ring, I would have no interest in trying to lift anyone. <laughs> so, you know, maybe Anakin be... or Kenny. I could do Anakin or Kenny. You, you got oh. Iron Claw. It? Iron Claw. I got an Iron Claw. It. All right. I got a big half pit bull, half pug, and then I got a normal sized pug. And <laughs> that big pit bull pug combo likes to tear up doors whenever he doesn't get his way. Oh, boy. Um, well, he does. He he has he has separation anxiety, really really bad. And over at my girlfriend's grandparents' house, where she was living at the time before she moved in with me, um, we would need to like sep. We would need like a breather from him, so we would like lock him out just for a little bit. Like he had other people out there, but like he would like claw at the door so much. And after like seven years of just clawing at this door it looks like wolverine's trying to break in <laughs> like it's and i don't need and like that's a home that's owned i rent right. this place i don't need that shit out of no. here hey, my cats I, have done a number on our carpeting so i understand that right so well let's <laughs> where do we want to go from here now rip Oh my goodness! I don't know where to go from here. I warned you guys whenever you first had me on. Like, I'll, I'm, I'll talk. Like, oh, no, no, it's we all have good. No problems with that. <laughs> like, throw away your notes. So you don't need them. Like, <laughs> well, you I'll, should see our notes. They're legit. My only, no, points. <laughs> my only notes for 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 you coming on was just Tony Khan story, and then just go from yeah, there. Yeah, that's. I am yes, that is my Tony Khan story. I am convinced that Tony Khan has found my TikTok and has booked AEW to piss me off. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Well, we're pretty sure he listens to us on very rare occasions and I would. likes I just to play with he... his action figures. And yeah, you know, I don't know if he <laughs> follows us on on Twitter because otherwise, I think I'd get some responses if he paid attention to <laughs> yeah, what probably. I put on there. Maybe putting his face on a donkey's ass might not have been the best idea, but you know, whatever. What are you gonna do? What are you gonna do? Hey, I, got, uh, I think I got a like or two on that one. Res- wrestling promoters, you know, yeah. they're all <laughs> jackasses anyway. Indeed. You say as Dave just came into the chat. <laughs> oh, hi, oh, hi, Dave. <laughs> I love it. I oh, love my it. goodness. Oh, oh, that's, that's what we call in the business timing. That's yeah. timing right there. Oh, All right, man. let's. <laughs> now nah, he's just letting the cocaine take him wherever it takes him, allegedly. <laughs> that's pretty much true. Mm. Uh, okay. Reb, where do we want to go from here? What do we want to talk about? Where do we want to go? Well, you know, we've we've had Zach on. We might as well let him plug his uh, his endeavors because we've talked on the shootout about your musical pursuits, sir. So uh, right, right. Why don't you fill everybody in on uh, on that? What you got going on? So um, right now we are set to play um, Wrong Side Eight One Two. My band Nights on Holiday. We're set to play Wrong Side Eight One Two in Jeffersonville, Indiana, uh, this coming Saturday. Uh, music at 8 o'clock. We'll be playing with our friends FMK, and we'll be playing with Deadfoot for the first time out of Indianapolis. They're digging out the door again. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> well, we got, when, when, when he gets all this stuff plugged, we need to, I yeah, think we ought to go into our top 10 enough. and then call it a night there, sir, because right, we're, we're an hour and a half. Yeah, I think you're about right. So... We should tell him, just leave the door open. It's fine. (laughs) I gotta watch the dogs. I've been fighting lately. Uh oh. Uh oh. That's not good. Especially since one's significantly bigger than the other. (laughs) Um, Give me a second. I'm gonna figure this out. Okay. Oh, while he's doing that, why don't we put up our? uh, Why don't we pay our bills while we're doing that? Just throw the video real quick. Sounds good. All right, so let's pay some bills here real quick.
show over? No, oh, no, no, no. no it's just like, we took that uh, outro for a little commercial break to plug our merch while you're uh, getting stuff figured out. Yeah, I don't think I got it figured out, as you can see. <laughs> like, I have so my big dog does not like to go into his crate, so he has protected himself in this guy's crate, um, and he is not coming out. And if I can't put that guy in this guy's, if I can't put this guy in that guy's crate or in his his own crate, I guess I'm just going to hold him. Um, there you go. It anyway, happens. so what's this guy's name? So this is Ludo, uh, named okay. after uh, the rock monster from the 1986 Jim Henson film Labyrinth. Nice. Um, so this is Ludo. Uh, Twitch is just a name that he came <laughs> Twitch. with. Uh, Twitch. <laughs> we got we got him from the Humane Society uh, several years ago. Uh, He's he's nine now. I we got one. He was six months old, and they're like, "This is Twitch," and <laughs> they're like, "How do you get his name?" And he was a surrender, and they're like, "Oh, he twitches his butt when he walks," which he does. <laughs> um, but then it turns out we met the the original owners of Twitch before he was surrendered, uh, and they were like, "No, he twitches because he would twitch while laying down uh, as a puppy, and he would fall off the couch." <laughs> so called him Twitch after that. And I was like, oh well, it's a good name. <laughs> and, anyway. My band, Nights on Holiday. Uh you can find us streaming everywhere. Uh we'll be performing at uh Wrong Side 812 at in Jeffersonville, Indiana this Saturday with our friends FMK and Deadfoot. We've never played with Deadfoot before, but we're very excited about it. Um we are uh we're playing we're playing a nice little 35 minute set there. Uh, I don't know if we're going on, we're definitely not going on last. We're probably going on first, but definitely come out and have a good time. Uh, if you're in the area, uh, we're also going to be playing Mag Bar in Louisville, uh, Kentucky, May 3rd. We're trying to have a, we're going to be playing Punk Rock Night or What the Fuck Ever is what it's called. Um, <laughs> It's called Punk Rock Night or What the Fuck Ever. With, <laughs> right. um, with it'll be us. It will be Louisville band Requiem. It will be Louisville band E flat and Louisville band Scrooge Mandela. Um, so it'll be a nice little time with that. I'm also planning on uh, we're trying to put up a show together the following day, May fourth. Um, I know that's the same day technically as a zero one show. So that's probably another zero one show. I'm not going to be able to make it to. Um, because I I won't be able to make it to the one in February. Uh, I was just month. gonna ask, do we get to see you in a couple weeks or not? No, unfortunately, you will not be able to see me in a couple weeks. <laughs> uh, it's just like my schedule is not lining up with my schedule. Like, <laughs> I we there. understand, we understand. <laughs> um, like I'm like, ah, oh, hey guys, I won't be able to make it to the February shows, and they're like, okay, and then I think to myself, like, all right. March 9th, I could probably make it then. And then I'm like, then March 23rd, oh man, it's my anniversary trip. Okay, well, not gonna make it to that show. And then I don't know if there's any shows in April. I don't think there's any shows in April. And then we jump into May. I already can't, I probably can't make the May 4th show. Ooh, uh, that's the worst. originally that, I couldn't that's cater. That's yeah. the cater. Originally, I couldn't make it to the May 4th show because I was told we had to be in a wedding that day. But uh, that wedding has been moved, I guess. I don't know. Um, <laughs> is it still happening? Maybe I, that's the bigger question. I think the I think the wedding is still happening, but it's just been moved because my girlfriend was like, Zach, you can't go to zero one that day. We have a wedding we have to be at. And I was like, I don't want to go to that wedding. <laughs> and do both. Are you kidding me? Decatur's like a four hour drive from me. No. Send April send her 13th. with like an iPad. FaceTime, so your face is there, yeah. and you're still at the wrestling show. April thirteenth. Uh, yeah, and then uh, zero one does have a show in April. April, okay. April thirteenth, Terre Haute. I should be able to make it to that show. I then should. we have May fourth. The thirteenth. 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 Okay. Dude, that's in Terre Haute. Yes. Okay, that's a busy weekend. I'm seeing. <laughs> I'm seeing, I'm seeing zero one that weekend. And then Death Clock, Dragon Force, and Necro Goblin oh, the next day. Death oh, wow. Clock. Better luck, Lips. I'm seeing Descendants in April, and I am seeing 
I'm seeing Descendants, Circle Jerks, and Adolescents in April, and I'm seeing Death Clock, Dragon Force, and Neko Got Lacan in April. Nice. So then, then we get a month off in July. All right. From zero one. Okay. But um, then it's like it's two shows a month. Yeah. Every month, except for April, July, and December. Yeah. I um. <laughs> yeah, my schedule is not being fun. I. <laughs> this is where I'm going to tease okay i've held one show i've held two shows i'm gonna hold a third show um, so uh the first show was a show um with a company that i am not going to be naming um second show was with zero one third show uh will be in partnership with zero one but i also plan on having um associations with other uh independent professional wrestling companies from around uh, the area. Cause I want to be able to put on a, I want to have my own little paw uh in, in my home area of Jasper, Indiana. Um, and I want to have, it's not going to be a zero one show. It's not going to be a typical paw cage show the, where I'm from. There's no wrestling. There's no wrestling right. scene where I'm from. Um, Cause if there was, There'd be no reason for me to drive four or five fucking hours uh, <laughs> to be able to do these wrestling shows. Right. Um, but the people that do watch wrestling around here, they know one kind, maybe two. And that is WWE, maybe AEW. So <laughs> it is. I need to book it a specific kind of way. Um, and I need to have specific kinds of people there. Um, that sounds really racist when I say it. That is not <laughs> what I, mean. I wasn't gonna say anything. I was like, I was like, I was like, I was like, it is not sound good when I say it like well, that. Well, how but... about this? When you decide the date that you're having that, okay, you let us know and we'll bring you back on. Perfect. Yeah, and we'll that way you can it. plug it. Perfect. But yeah, that is my tease. I plan All on right. having another show in Jasper, Indiana. The 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 goal is late summer, early fall. That is the goal. Okay. So, so. Hey, I'm just curious. Hmm. Who is in charge of getting the uh, play-by-play range when Rob is in a zero one? Who is in charge of the of the play-by-play? Yeah. Um, are you? Is that a is that a legitimate question or is that or are you being facetious? That no, is a legitimate legitimate question. Question. Okay, okay, because <laughs> I couldn't remember what shows have been out with Rob not on commentary. Usually Terre Haute, but yeah. Uh... So, well, the first first show that I remember from Terre Haute, at least the one that I edited, um, Rob was on commentary with that one. Um, so Rob was not. At... <laughs> Yo, what's going on? Oh, everybody's home. Oh. <laughs> I was like, ah. <laughs> Everybody's home. Like everyone's thinking. Everyone's going crazy. Give me one second. I'm all tangled yeah. up. Suspense is killing me. Suspense is killing me. <laughs> Yay! <Maybe>. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> no one's taking my stuff. Um. Anyway. Uh, Wayne gets uh, so that was uh. It's whoever wants to be on commentary. Um, that that is the one thing that I ran into at the first Terre Haute show that I was at. Rob was not there, and I brought all the commentary stuff. Mm-hmm. And I I went to Chan. I was like, "Hey, Chan, you gonna do commentary tonight?" And he's like, "Yeah, I'll do commentary." And then like the first three matches had no commentary, <laughs> and I was like, "Where the hell are the people doing commentary?" <laughs> And before the show, I was like, I was like, anybody want to do commentary? And Joey was like, I'll do commentary versus uh, in Jordan's match. I was like, okay, cool. And then I went up to Joey afterwards, like, like between matches. I was like, thanks, Joey. He's like, I like this. I'm going to keep doing it all night. And I was like, (laughs) cool. I don't have to worry about it. (laughs) There you go, Reb. Talk to Joey. There you go. Talk, talk to Zach. Be like, hey, Zach, I'll do I was gonna say, if you if you have if you need somebody and you know, I'm there, just come hit me up. And, uh, oh, perfect. It's, Thank it's you. a bucket list I wish, thing. I, I wish I would have known. Now, now I mean, you have a backup plan. How's that? Yeah. 
perfect thank you i saw you doing this i was like are you hinting no, no, I yeah I'm, i was hinting i was hinting <laughs> yeah i got him that's what we in the business call shooting your okay. shot <laughs> yeah shooting your shot hey man you gotta shoot your shot that's how i got back into indie wrestling right yeah. um that's uh I, I shot chad french a message like you need anybody to help with this paw cage show he's like i need a camera guy and i was like Oop cool that's my daytime job i'm a cameraman at a news station he's like cool and <laughs> here i am well hey reb why don't you tell zach who's coming up next week oh we have, yeah, we have uh, all sorts of new guests coming up oh, so so, well this is, is actually cody not rhodes? a new guest it's not cody rhodes it's not cody rhodes but we have just incredible just incredible yep yes it's coming he's from part friend, two friend yeah. of the show part two yep. Super excited. EC dub, yep. EC dub, EC dub. Hey, the week after that, we got Lady Mephisto. Oh, very PWE. nice. Then uh, Mike Outlaw. Very nice. Then uh, Heather Owens. Zach, have you ever been to the Squirt Circle Expo? I have not. I've always been meaning to go. Um, oh, man. It's a good time. It's such a good time. So, yeah, I've been meaning to go. It's just weird for me to go to places to pay to meet wrestlers when like i don't know like this i sound like a huge fucking dick when i say that. <laughs> like, saying it. like yeah you guys can pay to meet the wrestlers i'll meet them back like it's i don't like the business like, brother I, I listen i don't get it <laughs> i it's like when when Myron Reed is like standing right next to you at the production meeting at Paradigm, and mm-hmm. you're like, "That's Myron Reed right there." Oh, I mean, <laughs> yeah. Why? And I'm just thinking to myself, like, "Why aren't you on TV?" Like, yeah, no kidding. Damn. I will second that. And, and then you like, you see Billy Starks like walking in your direction, so you just go, and then, and then and she just goes, and it's fine. <laughs> and then you see. Fucking war! You see war like that's still the thing that blows my mind. You see, you see Jake Parnell, and you see Gary J, and they're like, "Hey man, how's it going?" You're like, "This is all I need." This is all. This is all. This is all. Like, and then you have like Devon Dudley, just like, "Hey, uh, Devon's here." Just like, huh? Hey, Devon Dudley. <laughs> yeah. Hey, how was how was Chavo? When uh, I was not there that. for Chavo, he wasn't oh, there for Chavo. I was oh. not there for Chavo. I wasn't uh, either. I hear he is a sweetheart. From everybody, he is that... great. I love He's... Chavo, but yeah, uh, we're but uh, both of us are going. Plus, Barry's going. Plus, Stacy's going. So we're mm-hmm. all going to the expo. It does we look like are. a lot of fun. It it does look. <gasps> it's, it's a blast. Fun. It is so much fun, especially wanted... when you're wrestling nerds like us. Yeah, yeah. The two yeah. live shows that weekend, Friday and Saturday night. Like they yeah. will throw one night, then the other one. So. Yeah, I know the Black Label stuff. like helps out and stuff, and just like that's just like the cool thing. It's like it's cool that there's a professional wrestling expo. Like I've seen some like wrestling TikTokers like head up there and check it out. Um, uh, there's a very there's a very funny story that I uh, that I thought was interesting about um, that happened last year. From this is this is not. It's not my not my story to tell, but they've told the story publicly, so I'll so I'll say it. Um, so there's this uh, wrestling TikToker, named Wheezy Blonde, um, and this is a beautiful woman, just just a beautiful blonde woman, uh, wrestling fan, t- uh, Twitch streamer, um, and she goes to the Squared Circle Expo, and she. Is not in line to meet MJF, but she is in the vicinity to meet MJF. Um, she's just not in line, and she she hears him like Blondie, go over here, <laughs> and she wa- she walks up to him, and she goes yes, and she goes uh, he goes um, he goes I don't know he hits on her, and she goes <laughs> I'm, I'm married. I'm, I'm very happily married, and he's and he just goes like, well, he like signs it and then goes goes take this. It's my hotel number. I'm staying here, <laughs> and just and she's and I'm and I heard that story. I'm just like, damn, <laughs> <All> right, <laughs> like a confident man. 
<laughs> Very confident. <laughs> hey, Menders, tell Zach your MJF story from uh, from the expo last year. The one year. where he yelled at the kid for crying? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so they take the people in front of me, because I was standing in line to meet MJF. Right. And uh, mind you, I got smart. I'm like, I'm not going to wear an MJF shirt. I'm not right. going to be one of those marks. Right. So I wore my thank you, fuck you, bye shirt. Right. So a corny fan, of course, right? Okay, yeah. So Watchable, but all right. <laughs> I was in there. In front of me is like this three-year-old little kid mm. in, in the little, in his stroller. stroller or whatever. And they go up there and he's like, would somebody please shut that kid up? And then threw his Darby Allen action figure over to the other side of the room so the kid would go away. <laughs> Oh, that's nice. He only told me to go away, so I, I was, I was happy with that. I didn't get yelled at. I didn't get. Yeah. I was happy with. I just got told to go away because mm -hmm. I, I had taken, I had taken actually one of our uh, JTR shirts that says mm -hmm. "I Heart Heels," and he, he looked at it. He goes, he signs it. He goes, I, I, I don't, I don't know what this is, but okay, here you go. And I'm like, okay, fine. I'm like, bye. Uh. Then a guy in a wheelchair, he told Hot Wheels to get out of his area, and um, <laughs> it, was, it was good times. Oh, Just nice. imagine if you were still in the wheelchair at the Expo. I'm Avengers. so glad I'm not going to be in the wheelchair I'm... at the Expo. All right, another hot take time. Uh -oh. <laughs> All right. Let's MJF. Go. Mm -hmm. Bad heel. Yes, good heel. I agree. Bad Too heel. Too light. There are... No, it's not that. It's not that. He's doing all the right stuff he's doing all the the right stuff um but it's it's just right enough that people are going Woo! <laughs> hammerstone tweeted out recently alex hammerstone tweeted out recently like oh I I have it. like it's I, yeah if you have it pull it up because I, I don't remember the entire thing off the top of my head but to to paraphrase he was like oh it's fine that I'm a heel when you can clap along and cheer for me and buy my stuff. But whenever I actually piss you off, I'm not being a good heel. Right. I am like, I don't think there's, there's not a good, there's not a lot of good heels anymore. There's not, no one's a good heel because, you know, everyone's too fucking nice. Not nice. <laughs> like, too, everyone's too, everyone's too up their own phone. I'll say yeah. that. Like there, everyone's on their phone. Everyone's like, "Ha It's like we're all in on the joke, which is why WWE did not flinch. WWE planned this past week entirely to piss us off. They have been feeding mm -hmm. wrongful information to insiders, so the insiders would then tell the reporters, and then the reporters would then tell us, and then we go. Cody's not in Cody's not going to Mania. He's not finishing the story. I don't want to wait another year. Boo Rock. Boo <laughs> you. The the one of the greatest professional wrestlers who have ever lived. Boo. Yeah, it's like you know, we all got really upset. Booing the rock? <laughs> 2024. The mm -hmm. only way you do that is you make Rock look like he is just stealing something but from someone who has rightfully earned it. We have been worked. <laughs> we have been, and we fell for it. We fell for a hook, line, and fucking sinker. And some people are still oh. falling for it. Uh, that's not a work. I'll tell you what they did. What they did, they took a baby face who's already immensely liked by hot. almost Very everyone, hot. and they found a way to make him hotter. Exactly. How do you make them hotter? You take away what you want, and they go, "Okay, here you go." Like, you know, if if I, if someone cooks a pizza right in front of me, someone cooks a pizza right in front of me, and it's a damn good fucking pizza. <laughs> it's, you're like, God damn, I can't wait to eat that pizza, and they just go, "I make this for you," <laughs> like, and they just take a big old bite out of it, and then you're like, "What do you mean you make this for me?" You told me you were gonna make this for me. You're like, oh, I made this for me. I don't know what you're talking about. And then, like, they take like another bite, and you're like, "No." And then you go, "Nah, you can have it." It's... <laughs> Reb's been saying saying this whole thing is a work. 
ever since it started. So it's so fun. Uh, by the way, like my by the way, here is. Go. Go ahead. My, uh, what my grandma used to do. She would make me a peanut that? butter and jelly sandwich whenever I would ask for it. And whenever she brought it to me, there would always be a bite out of it. And she would say the mouse got it. And I'd be like, Grandma, thank you for the sandwich, but there's no mouse that's taken that big of a bite. And you're the one making it. Why are you letting the mouse take a bite? <laughs> the rock is the mouse that took the bite. <laughs> my, my brother listens to this. He's going to do this with his kids. <laughs> I guarantee yeah. it. Somebody's yeah, going to ask for a sandwich. He's going to get one big bite out of it. Thing to do. I, <laughs> yes. Rep, uh, by the way, here is... Well, here's the Hammerstone tweet there that we were alluding to. Yes. And uh, yeah. on the nose. Just... Yeah, like, Alex Hammerstone, like, I mean, I'm, I'm, not a, I'm not a huge follower of his career, but, like, you're not, like, there's, it, we need to make people re- a really great heel. He's not so much a great heel anymore. Matt Cardona. In 2021. Oh, yeah. 22, Nuclear. Fucking. I got so pissed when <laughs> Meltzer, when when Dave Meltzer said, oh, yeah, uh, there were plants in the crowd to throw shit. No, there fucking wasn't. <laughs> no, there wasn't. And I'll tell you oh, why Dave. I know that. I'll tell you why I know that. So Cardona comes out and he can't make it to the ring. He physically, he like security oh, has to push yeah. fans out of the way to get him to the ring. There and there's so many people. I I paid. I didn't pay a whole lot for tickets. I paid for like fifty bucks for tickets, um, maybe thirty. So I'm in the back. I'm standing on the chairs. Like people in my row are just standing on the chairs just so we can see the ring because everyone's standing. Uh huh. And um, from whom the bell toll starts playing, this guy next to me leaves. He just sprints off. And I'm like, where the fuck he go? <laughs> and he was like, you know, Gage makes it to the ring and he comes back. And I'm like, dude, where'd you go? Well, you missed Gage's entrance. He's like, no, I went up there for Gage's entrance. And I was like, <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, okay. And, you know, we're watching, you know, we're having a good time, blah, blah, blah. And Ricky Shane Page hits, hits Gage with the light tubes. Yeah. Followed by Cardona hitting the Rough Rider on Gage. One, two, three. Immediately, this guy just goes, fuck this! And <laughs> throws the, a random beer bottle on the ground. He just goes, fuck this! Fuck you! <laughs> and just throws shit. Just immediately. Like, there wasn't a cue to go like, uh, no! Like, no! He just, he, just the second the bell rings, Big fuck this starts throwing shit, and I'm just like, whoa! <laughs> and uh, I run up like Cardona's trying to leave. I run up to him because he's leaving t- nor- towards my area. I rip open my shirt because I'm trying to hide the fact that I'm a Cardona fan here <laughs> because I'm yeah, legitimately <laughs> worried how people are going to take it. And I'm like, I'm like, yeah, Cardona. I go to hug him, and he just goes, get the fuck away from me! And just, <laughs> I'm just like, ah, okay. Not to be and fair, he was very bloody after that match was over. Very bloody. I got, yeah, very bloody. Very bloody, very sweaty. And yes. um, and he, we, we go out, um, like, there's a whole bunch of Cardona fans that just, like, are piling out into this, like, hotel casino area. And we like if you go on my Facebook, you'll be able to see it's like one of my profile pictures. It's just like 20, 30 Cardona fans, just like biggest fucking smiles on our faces. We're like flipping off the cameras and stuff. We're wearing Zack Ryder merch, we're wearing Matt Cardona merch, and we're like biggest smiles on our faces, and we're chanting Matt Cardona, clap, 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 Matt Cardona, clap, 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 clap. And the whole time, just GCW gauge fans are like, fuck you! Go <laughs> fucking die. Fuck you! Like, like they're so mad. They're like, fucking pussies, fucking virgins. Fuck you! And I was like, I'm like, it's a work, guys. All right. <laughs> okay, calm down. And but like they, they, that's that's heat, brother. <laughs> now, 
I can attest to the gauge entrance because I went to the War Games show a couple months after that in right. up in Chicago, and I have it with Narge, my co-host, and his his boy, and they're both huge Nick Gage fans. So right. when he came out for his spot in War Games, same deal, was just like a, just a mosh pit at the entrance right. way. It's just madness. I I was <laughs> I was trying to, to stay out of the way because you know I I fall down easy because I don't have great balance. Right. Was but, that when Ricochet uh, ended up in your crotch? No, that was an a old IWA show like 10 oh. years ago. Oh, whoops, yeah, sorry. Say, Long like, story. Like, what the hell is Ricochet <laughs> doing at a GCW show in 2022? Like, but but no, the, the main event that night was Cardona against Moxley when Moxley made the surprise appearance right. and beat him for the, for the title. And Cardona, the heat was just nuclear. He came out dressed like the Macho King. Right. And, I, I remember uh, watching the show and I was yeah. kind of upset. Because like when I left when I left New Jersey, because it was a we left what we left at five a.m. and we got to New Jersey at six p.m. We just drove straight through. We only stopped to get gas. Uh-huh. We didn't stop to piss. If you had to piss, hold it until we run out of gas. Um, Catering bottle. <laughs> and we drive all the way to Jersey stay at a hotel that maybe someone was murdered at um <laughs> it was like it, i don't know if either of you have been to atlantic city i have not so it is it is country bumpkin welfare meth <laughs> everywhere and then you just come out of these woods and it is just marshes with a city like in the back like it's it's weird it's a weird fucking thing but we I found this really really cheap hotel because we were not going to be staying there long we found we I was like king size bed two dudes we're fine um I plopped down on that bed and I felt like I took a bump in the ring like it was like it, it was not a it was not there for a good time um and meth and heroin has been done at that hotel. Did you bring that. a black light with you? No. Yeah. No. <laughs> Never take a black light with you to we, a hotel. <laughs> we literally got there, checked in, went to the show, came back, slept maybe five hours, and then drove back. Um, <laughs> and I don't remember where I was going with that. <laughs> I, was, I just, like, it was... Uh, and what the fuck was I going with that? <laughs> huh. We're talking about Cardona. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. The heat. The, the heat. heat. The, uh... Right, right. We'll go back and watch this and you'll be like, oh, yeah, I remember where I was going with this now. What the fuck was I going with that? All I know is I was like, I've had a long day. <laughs> you're good, you're good. I've had a long day. Well, Zach, I think we've kept you too long. It's We're going on... That we had you for about an hour and a half. So hour and a half. I <laughs> did. Uh, I did Squince's podcast. So I was close to three hours. So he was like <laughs> tell, telling his parents good night as as we kept talking. So <laughs> he's like, "What's that? Yo, good night. All right, I'll see you in the morning." <laughs> anyway, <laughs> all right. Well, Zach, we're gonna let you get out of here. Uh, nights, uh, nights on, on holiday. holiday, and you guys are on like Apple Music because I found you there. Yeah. And- on also Spotify. On Spotify. I got him on Spotify. Yep, yep. And then you got your um, show coming up in uh, Kentucky. Yeah, we we have we have Jeffersonville, Indiana show this weekend. Uh, we it. have a Louisville show uh, coming up in May. We're trying to hold a local Jasper, Indiana show also in May. Uh, we're hitting the studio March 9th so that we can actually like get a full album out rather than just recording in our in our basement uh with one microphone that works and our little thing so we're been hoping there. to yeah we're hoping to actually just get in the studio knock it all out in a day and then yeah move on very cool all right yeah. and then when you get your little show that your your show you want to put together in jasper you say us little know. show that sounds condescending menders yeah well I, like... when you get your animal your Pocade, I won't be quote. flying anybody in this time. <laughs> <laughs> All right, good call. But, uh, yeah. yeah. How about uh, you? You let us know. Let us know about a month ahead, a month or so ahead of time. That way we can get you back on. We'll do. We'll do. All right. Sounds All right. great. Thanks for joining us, Zach. Appreciate Thanks. It. Bye. Bye. <laughs> okay, that, that was, was fun.
fun. <laughs> Good thing you put that PG PG ish. <laughs> yeah. Actually, know. that didn't go up on this one. That was the truncated because I had the ten bells at the front. That's right. Oh, well. not a salty language on that one. It'll be but, all right. Uh, it's all good. We've we've done more. Well, I, Menders, we've got yeah. we got one more order of business, and we're going to get out of here since we already paid the bills. So why don't we just get to it? All right. All right, so after what seems like an eternity, Menders, we're doing a top, another Top 10 Tuesday. I know, it seems like it's been forever. I know. And if you remember the last time, we did greatest play-by-play announcers. And uh, this time, just to kind of keep with that tradition, we're going to be doing greatest color commentators this time around. So, uh, well, I don't <laughs> be... Uh, <laughs> Sorry, I just saw AJ's comment. <laughs> oh, Where's Kane to yeet Cardona oh. off the stage in a wheelchair when you need him? <laughs> All right, let me just do a little bit. Of... Now, like I said, I don't have a top ten per se, but I have ten. I just okay. don't have them in order. All right, let's get organized here. I think I'm okay. I think I'm good. All right. Are you good? Do you have all um, of them? I am ready. I got them all. Okay. All right. My hat keeps sliding. It feels like I'm losing my mind. All right. Number ten. Uh, went current for the for our number ten choice. I went with Corey Graves. <laughs> That's who I had down as my first one. <laughs> yeah. All uh, right. Very, I mean, he's so good. And now he's transitioned into the play-by-play role on SmackDown. But I always I, thought and he I was very good. It. No, me either. It. I like me it. Me either. But no, on color, he was always good. Uh, he's learned how to carry the broadcast, which I think is why he got the play-by-play gig on SmackDown. But uh, but yeah, he's. I find him to be very entertaining. Yes. Even though I know there are some people that don't feel the same way. But, you know. There are. Different but, strokes, different I mean, folks. That's kind of how we felt about Michael Cole. For a long, for a long time. time. For a long yeah. time, yeah. So. Yeah, so Graves is our number 10. Number 9, Michael P.S. Hayes. Mainly from the UWF in the 80s when he would work with Jim Ross. It's the young Jim there on the left. Yeah. Uh, he was, he kind of had that Heyman, Jerry Lawler thing where he was really good at needling Jim on commentary, being the heel. That's always the best. Uh, uh, he was doing commentary on my favorite Mid-South moment of all time, which is when Eddie Gilbert hit Bill Watts with the shovel and buried him under the Russian flag, and Jim Ross is losing <laughs> his shit. <laughs> and Michael Hayes is just just pouring gas on the fire the whole time. It's just great. <laughs> now, number nine, well, like I said, mine aren't necessarily in order, but I had Larry Zabisco. Okay. The legend, so, yes. Yes. I, I was hoping he'd be at the expo, but... No, no such luck. We, we still don't know that. I mean, oh, that's true. That's true. We still don't know that. If he's there, I'm getting that uh, either the AWA belt or the Western States Heritage belt. Yeah. Get him to sign it. All right, number eight. Uh, well, I've got Cyrus on here from his ECW days, but Don Callis. Mm. Uh, and this covers multiple companies because I really liked him in ECW when he'd be working with Joey Styles. Mm-hmm. But I really enjoyed his work with Kevin Kelly in New Japan Pro Wrestling in the mid 2010s. <clears throat> okay. So. That was before I knew New Japan existed. <laughs> it's been around for 50 years. Well, but you're also talking to the girl that didn't get freaking cable until she was out of high school. Well, you can't get New Japan on cable, but I mean. If you watch WCW, they always did a bunch. That's how I came. I didn't know New Japan until I watched WCW, and they'd have like Chono and Muda and all those guys. Well, yeah, I remember there. Muda and all them, but I didn't realize. Yeah. I didn't New realize. Yeah. It's all, it's all good. Then Liger also was another one. Okay. I had Taz because he's my favorite on AEW right now. <laughs> Taz is the best guy they've got in the booth. And he, and he, he is. Except for Kevin Kelly and 
Nigel. Well, when Kevin Kelly and Nigel are there, but when they're, they're there, not, yeah, Nigel's usually there on uh, Saturdays. That's the thing. I don't watch Saturdays. I only yeah. watch, and I only barely watch Wednesdays anymore. That's true. Oh, and right. that's usually because you tell me, yeah, you don't need to watch it, or yeah, you need to catch this. <laughs> Yeah, it's either there's something that's actually good that I tell you to watch, or there's something that's so ridiculous that I can't be the only one to watch it. (laughs) You're like, you have to watch this because I can't unsee it. I can't unsee it. No. Oh, they did that. What? They did that last night on Raw. They went back to one of the commentators, or one of the girls in the back that did the Oh, like Kathy Kelly or whoever. she She was, thanks, guys. I was like, oh, no, don't, don't. Please don't. Please don't. But at least with her, I was like, all right, well, it makes sense. But, ugh, yeah. Yeah, thanks, guys. All right, who's your number seven? All right, number seven. I got corny. So do I. <laughs> Between WCW, when he was, we do stuff with JR on Raw, or even when he was that short time with the NWA a few years ago. Mm-hmm. He's just so good. He knows He knows his stuff so well. And he knows how to push people's buttons. And he's not afraid to speak his mind. He, I don't know if you know this. He, he kind of lets his opinions out into the for everybody to hear. Oh, I, I never noticed. No, I, ne- I he's never. He's so reserved that. on his podcast, As, especially when it comes to <laughs> politics. Holy but Jesus! Oh yeah. That, although that's hilarious. He has such colorful <laughs> nicknames for people that he does. That he talks about. We have pockets and <laughs> hangnail. <laughs> Right. And the Cucamonga Kids. The Cucamonga <laughs> Kids. Penthouse and Felix. Penthouse and Felix. Uh, Dino Douche. Dino Douche. You know, you can always tell who he likes because they're the mm-hmm. ones that... He calls he them by name. Keep their name. <laughs> Nick Plain. <laughs> hey, he's going to be at the expo. So. I want to get a shirt that says Nick Plain. <laughs> Oh my goodness! Uh, well, my Gotta number six. Yes, uh, my number six. Uh, I got Taz. So okay, and I put probably one of my favorite two guys, like when they were together. But it was Paul Heyman when he was with Jr. in WWE? Oh, Dwayne. You are correct, Dwayne. Dwayne, Pockets how long have you been listening to the podcast? To <laughs> I would love to hear Dwayne listen to one of Corny's podcasts. Oh my gosh. Well, it took you a minute to figure out who everybody was. I had to get a list of like a like an index, like a glossary of all these people. Joey Nutella. Um... Joey Nutella, yeah. All the different ones for Omega. Twinkle Toes, oh, Harpo. Twinkle Toes, Harpo. Olivier. <laughs> Olivier. Uh, <laughs> yeah, so much yeah. fun. Yes. Uh, well, you had two among the kids, the young... <laughs> he had a lot of them. Nikki and Maddie. Me- Nikki and Maddie. <laughs> <laughs> All right, number five. The we'll stay, one we've got to stay on here. All right, number five. Uh, that's where I got the ah, Larry's you have Larry go. there. I loved him on Nitro with Tony. It was so good. Oh, he would be upset about Refrigerator Jacks. Totally oh, he really would. Refrigerator Jacks. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, he would about... listen for yeah. five minutes of Courtney talking about Naya before he'd check <laughs> out. Five? I think you're being nice. I'm being generous. I know. Yeah, I was going to say, I think you're being nice. Yeah. Uh, my number five, Macho Man. Oh, good call. I don't have him on my list. but uh, Really? Really, yeah. I'm I loved the uh, WrestleMania 9, though, when it was them and... Uh, he was the only one that wasn't wearing a toga. Right. <laughs> if I meet Wayne, I show. <laughs> Wait a minute. There you go. <laughs> yes, I should. I will wear I my take Potigy a, shirt. Maybe I should wear my Potigy shirt. There you go. Wear your Potigy <laughs> shirt. Actually, that's. we'll have to see what night that is because I have a specific shirt I want to wear on Oh, Saturday. yeah. I'm trying to play my T-shirts for the expo. Yeah, Saturday I have a specific shirt I want to wear to the to the wrestling match that night. Jack Bond. Yes, mm-hmm. and it's the one that not many people have, and I absolutely love. Yes. Oh my goodness! Well, you got to wear that if he's got a table too. 
Mm-hmm. So. Oh, I plan on, and I'm going to get my Jake Oman shirt because uh, he's been yes. promising me. He hasn't had it the last couple sh- at the last couple shows, and his is wrestling is dead, and I'm kind of excited to get it. So yeah, nice. how rude! <laughs> that took yeah. you long enough, Dwayne. <laughs> oh, uh, okay, number, number four. four. That's where I've got Heyman. Okay. <laughs> just, just the my he might have been my favorite part of the whole invasion angle in 2001 was just his commentary with Jim Ross. Yeah. Um. Four, I've got JBL. Oh, that's a good one. I don't have him on my list either, but he was, I always liked JBL. Well, you have to take in consideration. I was more of a WWE girl most of the time, so a lot of these color guys are going to be from WWE. That's fair. Yeah. All right. Uh, WWE, well, my... WWF, whatever you want to yeah. do. Yeah. Well, my number three, I got the King, Jerry the King Lawler there for my number three. That low? Well, I have my reasons. Okay. He's great. But I think there are two that are better. Okay. I'm actually you're gonna really be surprised at my number two. But well, uh, our number one better be the same. It's gonna be one. Either my one or two is gonna be your number one. I don't know which one. Okay. Well, I have number three. I had Jesse Ventura. Okay. Because of <laughs> him and his Hogan stuff cracks me up. Holy goodness. Yeah. I love that. Yes. All right. Number two. I got the brain. You, you're terrible. What? You're bad. I, I I'm sorry, but it, I, I think Bobby I'm, is I'm great. interested now to see who your number one is. He's just a little too sticky sometimes. Well, my number, my number two was the king. Okay. So, Jr. and the king are still probably. M- that's my favorite combination. That's my favorite time. combination. Yeah. Yeah. With J.R. and Heyman, number two. Right. Right. I was not a fan of Gorilla Monsoon. See, Scott's with me on this. Who's better than the brain? I'm glad you asked. Uh, <laughs> why number one? I got the body. Ah, uh, okay. Because of the Hogan stuff. That's uh, just why because you of everything. Number one. Because he was a heel that would still put the baby faces over. Yeah. He called it like he told it like it is. Yeah, and I of course had Bobby the Brain as my number. Yeah, it seems one. like everybody's every, everybody else is thinking it's the Brain from the comments. Looks like, but uh, mm-hmm. it just J Jesse seemed like more of a straight up announcer. Like he had good an like good uh, what's someone looking for analysis. What you, I and guess. there you go, analysis. I like that. But yeah, okay. So our top three match, they just weren't in the same different order. orders. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, so I'm not sure what we'll do for our next uh, next top ten. We'll have to think on that. Oh, before we go, we forgot to mention uh, we got to say something about Scott Demore getting removed from TNA as president yep. and, and head I, of creative. I tried to lead us into that when Zach was yeah. on. Everybody kind of dropped the ball on that one. Yeah. So from the sounds of it, uh, I'll just read what I read on on Demore has been terminated by TNA's parent company Anthem Sports and Entertainment with the belief that this, the decision came from Anthem owner Len Asper. Demore had made an offer to buy TNA outright with the backing of a major banking institution, but it was rejected. Apparently, Demore was displeased with the budget he was being given. He wanted to get some more money to for production. Uh, Anthony, and I'm going to butcher this name, Cicioni will be replacing okay. him. He's one of the executives for Anthem. He's not a wrestling guy. But uh, he's a fan, uh, but he's now, not. He doesn't have a wrestling background. Oh no, no! Okay, have you watched wrestlers yet on Netflix? No, I have not. You need to now that this has happened. You need to watch that because Barry, you are right because Hogan got gifted everything in that damn match. <laughs> Three That's of the guys point. on the other team got disqualified because Hogan get beat up a little bit. Boo hoo! Yeah. <laughs> but okay, so go Thank watch wrestlers. wrestlers now. Because okay. the guy that owns OVW with Al, uh-huh. he, they talk to him a lot in that, and he's a fan, but not in the business. Does that make sense? Like, yes, he doesn't get it. Uh, and he and by the end of it, you don't completely hate him. I still think he's a complete total jackass, but it, that's what it reminds what this is kind of turning into is what it's reminding me of right now. Yeah. Because it almost makes me wonder if Demore did that. Was that because some of the talent that he has, that is great. 
was more requesting money. for more money? Could be. I, from the sounds of it, the talent has been really up in arms about Demore getting removed. A lot so of it makes you wonder if Demore, was, if Demore was fighting for the wrestlers and now executives have came in and said, no, we're not doing that. That's what I wonder. I'm just hoping it's not something where this guy, Cicione, just said, hey, I want to run the wrestling company. And they said, okay, we'll just get rid of Demore and let you take over. I don't, mm-hmm. I don't think that's what happened, but I hope Tony it's Khan not. what? <laughs> Thanks, guys. Thanks, guys. Yeah. <laughs> oh, God, that's so bad. I hate that one. <laughs> you look so happy in that picture. <laughs> Clayton Clark still wore it better. <laughs> that's so wrong. Again, not my best work. Mm-mm. <laughs> Why does he always look so desperate? <laughs> and why do all why do the boys look so uncomfortable? Right? Well, I I think we know the answer to that. I <laughs> ask a dumb question, get a dumb answer. Get a dumb answer. <sighs> all right. Well, Minders, what do you say we get out of here? We're, we're a little bit long, but yeah, a little bit longer than what we usually do. But you know what? Our guest was awesome. It was awesome. worth it. it was yeah, exactly. Totally it was awesome. We will be having him back yes. for more stories and whatnot. I'm always down for a good Zach story. Yes. Uh, don't forget, next week uh, we'll have part two with Just Incredible. So we're looking forward to that also. Super uh, excited. Hopefully no more visuals to keep in my head. Uh, yeah. Should I well, find well, that picture well, that I that I cooked up of Heyman? No. No. <laughs> well, maybe. You might want to send it to him. Send it to him. Let him get uh, he, a kick out of it. He may not I, remember telling the story. Although I'm hoping... I'm hoping he's able to make it next week because after the pictures we saw oh, yeah. of his leg. Yeah, that's not, it was not good. I, but, I hope, I hope he's able to join us. I hope so. Uh, I'll hit him up in the meantime and then uh, make sure that uh, I say card subject to change as they say. But anyway, yep. uh, I said uh, tomorrow night on the zero one shootout, we'll be joined by the current Thursday night throwdown champion, B.A. Malkin. Who's Menders' best buddy. You know what? What? I was like, get the fucktopus? Fucktopus. <laughs> fucktopus. It's all right. You just wait. I'll be decked out in all of my Jimmy gear. Oh, uh, sure you will. You might have a new on sign. The walls. Might have a. Yeah. Might have a I new think a sign. Handsome, a handsome devil made made a sign for you, didn't he? Yeah, he did. I'm super excited. Oh, uh, Dwayne's asking who was the wrestler we did the 10 bells for. Chris Markoff. He was an AWA wrestler back in the 70s and 80s. Uh, passed away this past week. So. But yeah. Right. So yeah. tomorrow we've got BA. Meh. The next week got just incredible. Hopefully, knock on wood. Hopefully. Yes. And then uh, after Justin, we got Lenny Mephisto in two weeks from Pro Wrestling Epic. We Mike Outlaw are so excited he's coming. <laughs> yes. Very excited about Mike Outlaw coming on. After I am that. too. Then, uh, of course, Hardcore Heather Owens talking about the Squirt Circle Expo. Uh, Polly Tomaselli coming up uh, from the Chicago area. A uh, couple false starts with Polly, but I think we're going to be good to good to go this time around. Hopefully. Then, uh, then after that, we got Jake Oman Yay! on the uh, Go Home Show before the Expo. He's going to be at the Expo so wrestling. Excited. So excited! And then, uh, then the second week of April, uh, Menders will not be with us. It's going to be me and uh, me and Jabari Sinclair, my buddy from Gold Rush. And yep. we are going to not only be doing the Monkey Cup Tag Team Invitational Tournament that we've been we've been pushing for the last few weeks, but we're going to be joined by Jason Knight, another ECW guy. I'm uh, really actually, kind of bummed I'm missing that one, honestly. The sexiest man on earth, uh, former manager of Just Incredible. I know. So, with all the stories that Justin's told us, I'm yeah. really kind of bummed that we're missing it. I'm missing it. And Jason's got a long history in the business before ECW, so. Well, I'm hoping I I'm hoping I'll be done with what I got going on to where I can at least. Jump on and listen. listen. Yeah. Cool. So. So that's what, uh, also don't forget. Uh, we are going to be doing our third annual JTR Mania coming up. Uh, it'll be strictly for YouTube. We'll drop as a podcast. That's going to be on. I think the Thursday before WrestleMania is what I'm thinking. Menders. Thursday. I well, I can't do the Friday. Okay. I got I got a conflict, but. Uh, do you work that weekend? Uh. Yes, because that's, the, that's I work mania weekend. Okay. So we talked about maybe doing a, a live one at the expo, 
but uh, we'll see. I don't think we could round up any guests. Because well, we I wouldn't them. expect us to round up any. I don't think anybody. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to be broke as it is by the time it's all over. <laughs> so, Look at this guy. No, he's not going to be there, is he? I don't think so. Ugh. 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 Um, let's see. <laughs> I'm going to try to make it March 1st to another to signal 10 again. It's on a Friday. Okay. But I think I'm going to try to hit that indie show over in. I got to see if I can make it work because it starts at doors open at 530, which is 430 our time. And it's an hour drive over. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, maybe I get off at four. <laughs> Minders, we're all the gagging, so let's go ahead and get out of here. All right, let's go. So we'll see you guys next week with uh, Just Incredible. And until next time for Minders, this is Rev. Run y'all. Life is hard, work stiff. And thanks, guys.